There it goes. Holy crap. Things are acting very strange today, but hello everyone, Vasive here. Welcome to another session of Quarantine. We got the full party in again, which is awesome. We're going to be doing another session, and uh, I don't know if I have any much else to say to that, but I appreciate you guys being here. Let's get us switched over to our main scene and say hello to the party. What's going on, kids? We is live. Holy crap. Pancog, you are a tiny face <laughs> in the corner of your webcam. All right, hopefully this will work just fine. Uh, I don't have you guys okay. muted, do I? There we go. Uh, um, no, basic, real quick. Uh -huh. uh, this is a very, like, very peculiar. It's a what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very it's peculiar a Dark Souls 3 stream. Oh, snap. I did forget to switch something, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> That's what I was forgetting to do. I was like sitting there looking at everything too. And I'm like, uh, I can't find what I'm forgetting. Whatever. Uh, let's fix this up. Yuri, you got it? You the man, dude. That that means I uh forgot to update the, the chat bot stuff to include the the proper things. Get rid of the blind. Add the ambience. And we should be good. Okay. Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, guys. Let me. I gotta. I wish editors could do tags and stuff because they can't, and it's obnoxious. I'm not gonna claim any characters. Looks like we're still waiting on Miss Creation to pop in, so uh, we can get them in. Let's do. Um, I'm nearly. She was trying to load up. It's all having good. Some issues loading into the uh, fantasy ground. Persistent campaign. Uh, snap. I forgot what the other did. Tabletop or something like that? I don't remember. I'm in. It's like I'm dice. In. Sweet. Perfect timing. Uh oh. Someone's got the ringing sound again. Or the static sound. Also, my bot disconnected, so that's fantastic. That's why the treat commands didn't work. All right, go ahead and give a, another shot for the treat commands. There we go. Okay, so we know the bot's connected. We just heard cereal. What's going on, guys? Hey. hey time. All right, let me get them treats Don't ready. Treat, dude. Okay. Doggies! Where are the dogs, by the way? Our illustrious champion returns. Welcome. Oh, home. and Pancake coming in with the seven big ones. Hold on. All right, we we, we got to distract stream real quick. I'm going to hold on to these treats because I don't know where the dogs are. Actually, I will take a bet. I believe the dogs are outside sunbathing because it's nice and hot out. But thanks so much for the seven months, Pancake. Uh, choose your color, my friend, and we'll get you up on the wall of power. Also, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, this green color. always. Green always. All right. Um, it's, I think it's uh your mic that's getting all staticky, pancake. Of course it is. <laughs> and, like, unfortunately, there's nothing I can really do it, about it. It, so. it all it always happens like right before stream. You sound fine the entire time, and then as soon as we go live, it gets all staticky. It's weird. All right, there's your name, my friend. We'll add you to the wall of power. I like the oh. Those emotes are cool. The hand, I like that. But thank you so much, my friend. <sighs> okay, let's see. Um, let's catch up here. Looks like everyone is in the game. That is fantastic. Okay, where did we leave off last time? You guys uh, figured out what happened with Belroy and uh, his little affair thing going on. And then, uh, oh yeah, you guys ended outside the game cave after beating up uh that dude that are th those mercenaries i guess you just beat up one of them so yeah you're outside the cave yeah and didn't we leave the um like the big dude with him we kind of walked away and that was where we left it or yeah i think um you guys yeah, just left bit. uh douchebag mcgee with uh the rest of his guildies yeah, I, can't, I can't remember his name i didn't write that one down think... i'm afraid my bad you said uh, I'm pretty sure we just dropped him and 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 then we then we ended. I don't think we really um 
did any sort of like uh, RP after we killed the dude. Well, I mean, I don't mind taking it from there if it makes it easier for everyone. Yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, also, I forgot to say, we're going to try to keep my this... Note. We're going to try to keep the stream, like, three hours, because last time was, like, six hours. It was really crazy, and I know people need to catch out. So we're yes, gonna... I, I know, because I had to watch all of it to, to catch up. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Because uh, your character, unfortunately, or you disappeared, unfortunately, due to internet issues. Um, but, okay. Well, let's... We can speed through this. Um, so let's say that you guys just downed him, and uh, he's unconscious. He's, he's not dead. Um, but... Oh, dude, I forgot all their names. I had, oh, I can figure it out because I have NPCs saved in Fantasy Ground. I think. Or at least I have the encounter. I think that was name was Grizz, I think. Grizz? Yeah. Grizz. There was Grizz. Grizz. And there was, I've got it written down. Hang on. Sam uh, Samson. Uh, yeah, it's Grizz and Samson. Uh, so Bell, Samson was the good guy. Absolutely cool, Bell, Bell Roy, um, okay. So Grizz is on the ground. Unconscious. Samson's a little hurt. Actually, uh, Crimson healed him, if I recall. And uh, that's where you guys are left off. So go. So go. Um... <laughs> So we uh uh what's kind of Samson's reaction to all of it? What's it, what's his deal? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna run into. Um he's kind of uh Samson's a bit in shock because uh Grizz revealed that uh he's a higher rank and he, he also feels uh betrayed because uh Grizz was like his right hand man for a, a long time. Um, he feels betrayed that Grizz behaved this way, and it looks like uh, he's just ha had this course of vengeance about him this whole time. He didn't care uh, about history or anything, and it seems kind of shallow that he just wanted to kill this person for seemingly bullshit reason that uh, he was flirting with this person over a message similar to Belroy, and uh, turns out she was a monster to him, and he just wanted nothing. He, the only thing he wanted to do was... Uh, Kill her, essentially. Uh, he is knocked out. Or, uh, Grizz is knocked out. Yeah, Grizz is knocked out. Uh, Samson okay. is just kind of more um, upset. Well, this just proves that even if you are a monster, it, it is really just how humanity reacts to each other that has, uh, perpetuates the, the cycle of hate. Uh, I forgot the button. There it is. I suppose you're true. I don't know what no to do with him. No one has to die. Um, uh, he's kind of just thinking about what he, how to how to pursue this because he, that is his superior. However, he doesn't agree with any uh the actions he has taken. Uh, he says, uh, but this is a guild matter now. I thank you, your friends, for your restraint and. But we can take it from here. Would having a noble's backing help you uh, when going back to your guild and explaining the situation? We don't answer to anyone's status. So the only thing we answer to is our guild. So, but I appreciate the offer. I'm sure you guys have many adventures ahead of you. You need not worry about us. We've got this handled. And uh, he looks over to, what was it, DeWitt? And Dwin, and uh, he kind of nods at them both to go pick up Grizz and uh, load him up. They put him in irons because he's not dead; he's just unconscious. And uh, they just kind of lock him up, and uh, looks like they're going to be on their way to return to the city of where their guild reside. Um. Yeah. Uh, we'll handle. Uh, sounds good. We'll handle. Uh... We'll take care of the uh, the Medusa, and I'd I'd like to I'd like to bury her. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah pay some yeah. respect. Oh yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And yeah, memorial to. So I'll grab I'll grab her over my shoulder, and we'll we'll make our way. 
um you know just kind of just kind of separate but um i think burying her near her cave somewhere would be perfect Ooh. but Oh, I still, I still have the letters from um, the Medusa in my bag. Um, can I read those letters to see if there's oh, any location yeah. that's really special? I know they said about meeting on a hill at one point. Does it, is any in yeah. these letters tell us where, you know, somewhere would be really meaningful for her to be buried? Is there any yeah, location? Maybe there? the romantic spot they met or something. Yeah. Um, you can bury her. Where they were originally supposed to meet, I suppose. I mean, to be fair, it's not that far from here, yeah, if I remember you, correctly. You, like it's 50 feet away or something. With, yeah. <laughs> and it's near her cave, so it kind of does both things. So yeah, maybe, yeah, on, on the hill. That's nice, sentimental. So uh, since, since I have uh, more knowledge of the forest, I could <clears throat> definitely pinpoint the location, correct? Um, you guys are in plains right now. Uh, the forest is where the creature is that you guys are, that the mercenaries were actually trying to hunt down. They just got it backwards. Actually, we, you guys determined you didn't get it backwards. Grizz intentionally misled the group to go try to kill the Medusa. Yeah. Holy crap, I'm lagging out. Um, let's see. Um, so you guys are going to bury her off in the... Yeah. Okay, uh, yes. you can do anything with Belroy? Well, Belroy is turned to stone, and everything around him is kind of turned to stone. So there's how not heavy really... is he? Yeah, He's pretty heavy, heavy, but they... I don't know if you guys yeah. know this. Your fighter is oh, okay. nasty strength. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, kind of at Rokax. I'm kind of looking at Rokax like, hmm, we're the weighing it up. Yuri, for this yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well then, I'll uh, Lucia will say to Rokax. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's really going to happen if we bring him back? I mean, honestly, I feel like like just just the statue of Belroy to Belthony? Belthony? Oh what is she supposed to do with a statue of To be her? fair, she's got a point. <laughs> what, what can they really do with the statue? Like, she right? Yeah, I mean, if they you really want to drag a 300 pound statue back to. Well, I mean, to be fair, at the moment, we've got two things we need to be doing. We need to go and see the wizard um, in Raska, mm -hmm. um, name of Eldred. And we still need to sort out that rat problem, um, which is happening under underground um, of Campion. Um, we also need to... Those guys will be running out of food very, very, very soon. So... We also need to tell her, um, you know, you know, the original fiance uh, that, uh, you yeah. know, yeah, that uh, fiance is now a statue, and <laughs> your fiance is now a statue. Didn't, didn't we agree? Not, <laughs> we agree not to tell her that. We we agreed mm -mm. to. No, no, I thought we agreed not to tell about the Medusa. Oh, um, yeah. No, we there. should just tell her that Belroy's, you know, <clears throat> basically have... dead. Like, not, don't tell her that he's a statue, because then she'll be like, well, we can still save him. Don't give her. <laughs> because they, they already said we can't save him, right? She yeah, was... we can't send you back, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So if she knows that he's a statue, she's going to try to save him. And it might so drive her mad. So... It would just be better to tell her that he's dead. Would yeah. it be useful to send Kyrian back to Belthony uh, with a letter? Explaining that, like that he found Belroy and he is unfortunately passed on? You could probably yes, do that. Uh, the... I don't know if your Ooh, cat is... Might... I don't know if your cat is trained in that ability yet. Um, I don't know. What What do you guys think? You, th you think that's something you'd like to do? What is Because I, I can just do? DM and say, "Yo, yeah, your your cat." Basically, I'm trying to use my cat. Suddenly knows this law <laughs> or this ability to go understand that you want to just go back to the town. You guys, you guys, cool with that? Is that what you want? Sure, why not? Okay. Because I'm not scared of telling Belthony that, hey, Belroy's dead. And then gives us uh, leeway to make our way back up to the wizard like we're supposed to. Okay. Um, okay, so tell me what you're going to write in the letter. Uh, I that's the one that's going to be the best one. Are Unless we mailing her a letter? 
Yeah, you're attaching the letter to your cat. Also, be aware if you do this, you're not going to have your cat companion or your pet if uh, a fight breaks out anytime. Aren't we only like 40 minutes from the town? You're a couple hours from the town. Or a couple hours from the yeah. town. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, we need to we need to uh, take a short rest after that um, break. So um, yeah, I'll say you guys are resting, figuring out where you're gonna okay. move forward. Let me let me update that. <laughs> that plus Kirian, I'm sure can would he? I mean, if she wants transform into the bigger panther as he's doing this. Just as uh, in case of he might meet enemies. I was I was more saying for you guys, you won't have your animal companion. Right, I understood that. Um, if, if I would say that, if, like, I mean, if he's doing an errand or something, yeah, he just grow up, he just gets big, so you're fine. So like at, on his, cause otherwise a cat, a kitten running that whole direction is, is going to be ridiculous. If it's a full blown panther size, it could get there pretty quick. So is that what we want to do, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Send, if you want to yeah. Send your, uh, yeah. Yeah. As long as you're okay with not having um, Kyrian for a, a while. Well, I mean, well, I'd say what, about six hours in total. There's a couple hours there, but by the time they come back, we'd have already been a few more hours towards yep, you'll the be tower. A, so you'll be a while. About six, seven hours. Uh -huh. Can you handle being without the cat? Can, well, can the party handle being without Oops. Kyrian? Up? I, I think I think our party can, especially because if Kyrian's in full giant panther size, he's. Well, he'll be faster now. We'll, he'll be a lot faster than what we thought he was before. So he'll be. Boof. Okay. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe we'll be in some trouble, and eventually he'll just pop out of the brush somewhere <laughs> and just come in bad off kitty like. Ah. Oh yeah, dude. And, and stuff to leave my scent as a trail for him to follow back. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh... Because he doesn't know exactly where you're going, you'd have to leave something for him. Um, well, don't they have like a form of spirit on? Yeah, but that's so good, that's gonna be over the course other. of miles. You guys are gonna be miles away. I'll, I'll say, um, I don't know. You you can make some sort of scent markers or something as you're traveling, so that they can follow uh, on their way back. If you want to do that, right? And I'll make sure that I attach. Um, like my hair tie, one of my hair ties, uh, around their paw, so that they have a scent uh, marker on them. Okay. So what do we want to put in this letter? Uh, um, I don't know. Go ahead. Um, dear uh, Belfany, um, we are really sorry to make you aware of your fiance's passing. Um, where are you going to say we found him and how? Mm, um, it's the thing. Well, I think the last time we agreed that um, we were going to like try to convince her that he, he was died a hero um, in a way that made him look good uh, you know, for her sake. Um, so we can we're not going to mention the Medusa. We could mention maybe we, the bandits that we found and we fought. Maybe we could say he was captured by them. We tried to rescue him, but by the time we managed to get to him, it was unfortunately too late. Um, and... He was trying to protect another uh, a merchant on the road. As yeah, his, oh, as he was no. traveling, and unfortunately, he met his demise while trying to fend off bandits. We attempted to help, but unfortunately, we. We were too late. Okay. I think that sounds That works for me. Uh, so you Sign guys... quarantine. <laughs> Sign quarantine, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> we'll let that work. Uh, okay. So uh, you send that off. And, uh, oh. Uh, okay, you, you send that off into the distance. And uh, now what do you guys do? Uh, I think we'll start heading towards that, uh, towards that wizard. Yeah, start heading towards Raska. Yes. Raska? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So we need to take um, a short rest somewhere along the way, though. So we've already done that. I think. No, you guys already one, done we? that. Yeah. Oh, we have. Oh. Yeah, you, like, like five minutes ago, just had one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's because I was writing um, down yeah. what, what our plan was. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Um, so you guys are gonna continue heading to Raska. Uh, let's see. Um, so it is a, a quite a distance away. We will see if you guys get a random encounter or something. So I will leave it up to one of you guys. You guys decide amongst yourselves. Who's going to roll a d12? And you'll roll it into chat. And if you get an 11 or a 12, you're going to get a random encounter. I think we should all roll to see who rolls. You want to roll to see who rolls? <laughs> That's a fair <laughs> thing. That is a fair <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. I mean, you guys can do that if you want. Right, who, Whoever gets who the has... highest rolls on a on a a d20 gets to roll the d12. God. All right. Sure. Go no, do that. I was that. thinking like single elimination tournament tournament style. So. You well, know. I think Pancock's I'm already won this. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. roll a twenty. So uh, no, nineteen. Oh, damn, but dude. I think uh, I don't mind who rolls it. It's gonna be yeah, no, who rolls. So. Good Pancock, you go ahead and roll it. Let's roll a d12. Yep. Love the Oh, she rolled a d20. Yeah, you're supposed to roll a d20. Because I was like, uh, oh, you are supposed to yeah. roll a d20? Roll a d okay. You're rolling I a d20 to roll see who rolls a d12. All right. Oh, we're, well, yeah. Well, I got Pancock that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Pancog's got it. You guys are going to have a 1 in 20 chance. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have a 5% chance to get it. Um, I'll pass. So... Yeah, Pancog, you can go ahead and roll a d10, or 12. I did, it just isn't showing up in chat. Oh. I literally rolled the same for twice. So... Are we getting that stupid That's thing where it takes week. forever? We might be getting that problem yeah. where... Uh, it seems yeah, I just tried rolling through. as well, and it's not coming up. Cool. My dice, like, disappeared halfway through the roll. <laughs> Give it a hot so minute. Mine, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's some, there's some something <laughs> weird going on. All right, it'll show up in a hot second. Just tell us what uh, the first roll you was, or first roll was a uh, shit. It was a six. Oh, okay, cool. You guys don't get a random encounter. I actually kind of didn't want one, but I think that's also, a cool idea to uh, put it on you guys if you get a random encounter for really long travel sessions. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna say. Uh, you travel for many, many hours. Uh, you're making some pretty good progress. You're on your way to Raska. Um, up ahead... Scent markers, correct? Uh, yeah, I'll just say you, you put scent markers... As we go. A, as you go, that are common enough to that uh, Kyrian can find their way back. Uh, you've been traveling for about eight hours uh, on foot. Um... After several hours of long travel along the quiet, winding path, uh, a small village actually comes into view, uh, which is a thankful sight after a difficult journey. Uh, you're kind of getting hungry. Uh, the Your equipment's kind of been wearing on you. You're getting tired. Um, uh, but it's it's a hopeful to be like, cool, there, there's a little town up there. Um, you are getting close to, um, as, you, as you, what did I say? Uh, it was south. West ish, yeah. So the path started taking like a southwest uh curve, and whoa, my computer is lagging. There we go. And uh, you start to actually go the direction towards uh, a forest, a more foresty area away from plains. Um, the dense forest clings tightly to the edge of the path, and the cradles in the village in in cradles the village in thick pines and spruce trees, uh, several dozen. Quaint wooden colleges or cottages, colleges, are nested in a circular shape. Uh, plumes of smoke billowing from the chimneys. In one corner of the cobbled town uh, square stands a, a pretty cozy tavern. I need to sneeze. <coughs> uh, I said you were coming up on it, but we'll say you had been coming up on it, but you are now at the edges, the borders of the this little village now. Uh, you see a sign as you're approaching uh, the edge of it. It says, uh, Welcome to Whitwick. Uh, 
Well, I think, uh, just make our way to the tavern. Tavern has an inn in it as well. Um, yeah. sure, there, there's one nearby. They, they usually go hand in hand. <coughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I, I think we should make our way to the tavern there and get our get our equipment off and get some rest. Get some food, and hopefully we can uh, meet up again with uh, Kyrian after he finishes his chore. Okay. Um, as you guys are walking through the town, um, let's see. Um, Pancog, go ahead and roll a nature check, and uh, anyone else can roll an investigation check if they want. Also, I'm gonna... Nothing's coming up. I can't even save notes or anything. Like, nothing's working. I, I can click everything, but I can't add notes. The rolls aren't coming up. Yeah, yeah I can't either. I, c I can click on spells. That's it. All right. <laughs> Everyone <Hey>. close Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Hopefully that's it, but we're live again. Hopefully... Nothing bad happens anymore because this is freaking frustrating. Um, just stuff doesn't work for inexplicable uh, reasons. Oh, <laughs> we have friends popping back into chat. Welcome, home. Welcome back, my friends. Um, let's see. Uh, we don't necessarily need much of Fantasy Grounds right now. Um, I can roll for you guys too as you guys are getting in. Uh, but let's see. Let us. Um, oh, I was having you guys roll. Uh, checks and stuff. Let's see. Um, okay, so I see Trindom, Miscreation, Serial, Rose, Green, and okay, so that's most of you guys. That's good. Let us continue and pray to the technology gods that the computers stop shitting on themselves. Stupid stinking garbage, man. Ugh. All right, hopefully stream is okay because my computer is having an aneurysm. Anyway, okay, so you guys are walking through this town, um, kind of checking it out. Uh, Pancog, I don't know uh, if your character is live right now. If not, I can roll a d20 for you. Um, you were gonna... Okay, I will roll a d20, and so you rolled a 10. And what is your nature check? <clears throat> Just plus one. Oh, really? I thought you had a higher nature check than that. Yeah. Nope. Oh, I think that would be our druid. I was going to say, maybe that's Corrin. Maybe I was getting <laughs> you guys confused. Say, yeah, uh, okay, Corrin uh, had the higher one. But is... Okay, so I'll say Corrin rolled that. Uh, so Corrin got a 12. And everyone else, I'll, you can roll the investigation if you want. Um, because... Um, Oh, cool. We got some rolls. Damn, cereal. Nice roll. Hitting that roll, dude. <laughs> you're using all your good rolls when you're not stabbing yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that cool. sucked. Um, okay. So. You, uh, you guys are able to, uh, as, as you guys are just walking through the town, uh, you actually take notice that uh, many of the cottages and I guess the buildings in general uh, have boarded up windows and heavily reinforced doors. Um, some even uh, feature uh, some very large scratch marks uh, that are gouged into the wood. Um, the nature check that Corrin did uh, <clears throat> reveals that it, uh, it was made by a humanoid uh, made the scratch marks. Um, but it's like midday and, uh, well, that doesn't really work with the, uh, the time you ended. We'll say your, your short rest was a long rest, because then it would make it early morning, and then you got here at midday. That's fine. Um, it, uh, but you get, as you are entering the town, for the size of the town, it's really odd that you're not actually seeing anything, or not anyone. Uh, you do notice that, uh, once you get to the town square, it's deserted. Uh, there, in fact, there's not a, a single living soul uh, outside. 
There we go. Fantasy Grounds was acting weird. Okay, is there any sort of sign of people like running away in a hurry? Like, were there things just left out, or yeah. is it just completely barren? Like, no sign of life whatsoever. Um, no, you can definitely tell there's life, and there's a. Uh, it, it's obviously a, an active town. It's just right now, um, people don't seem to be outside. When I said mid midday, it's okay. more it's more like six or seven o'clock. <laughs> can I say, can I see if I know anything about uh, maybe the town's history? Uh, to see if this is a normal occurrence. Did you, you say normal or animal? Uh, normal, like normal history. If they might have a history of certain events like this that might have been written about. Yeah. Um. You won't. Nothing uh, significant that you would know about this town would say that this is a normal event, uh, but you are able to know that, obviously, that those their walls or their walls, their windows and stuff are boarded up to obviously keep out whatever has been scratching and gouging at the doors that are trying to get in. Uh, it seems more of like a preemptive, uh, cautionary. I don't are know, there any action. tracks or any tracks at all? Any tracks? No. Could it be anything to do with the rats that were or similar to the rats that we found? Uh, the scratches are humanoid. I'd like to I'd like to call out to see if anybody um, comes out of any of the buildings. You know, just okay. you know, hey, is, is anybody around? Um, we're looking for lodging. Uh, Hello for, there. For the most part. Um, no one uh, comes out the doors or anything. Uh, you do see a couple of heads, like, kind of peek out from the boarded windows. Um, some kind of, like, crack open their door to see what's going on. Um, uh, when, but, uh, but the tavern will be the easiest crashes. place to gain information. Oh, it's not, it's not, like, locked up or anything like that? The tavern? No. We can, yeah, we can walk in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Totally. I thought everything was boarded up so that we couldn't get in anywhere. Yeah, like, it's just boarded up as a, a protective measure, but, you know, you can... Like, people, will, like, will lock their doors or whatever, but uh, if you, like, go knock on them or something, they can answer. Come start looting or something. So you're, you're saying it just, like, looks like uh, Seattle right now. Sure. What you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you're gonna head to the, the inn, tavern, whatever? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh in the corner of the town square uh stands uh the the, the Holly Inn. Uh it's kind of cozy. Um the entrance has a a heavy oak door. It, uh, it's barred from the inside and it has a small stuttered peephole. Uh like all the buildings uh in Wentwick, the windows are boarded shut. Uh you knock on the door, uh make a shout out and uh uh the peephole kind of slides open and an old man uh, kind of peers out, uh, and kind of stares you down. Uh, he kind of he shuts it, or like he kind of he peers at you, and he's like, "Who goes there?" Uh, we're some uh, we're some travelers just uh, looking for a place to rest. He kind of eyes you up and down. He can tell you're obviously uh, the adventuring type, and uh. He goes, be you the, uh, the mercenaries that we'd hired to take care of our little problem? Uh, that's not us, but, um, we may be able to help you. Uh, as soon as you say that, he slams the, the peephole shut. You can hear some fiddling, uh, going on behind the door. Uh, the, stur the sturdy door kind of creaks open, uh, revealing a, a quiet tavern. A tall, thin man, um, eyes you from behind the door. And uh, he's uh, kind of sour-faced and pale. And uh, a large cracking fire warms the Holly Inn in the in the corner. And a smell of cooked meats wafts in the air. Uh, the lofty walls feature dozens of mounted animal heads of, like, elk, bears, owl bears. Uh, and one lone patron sits in the, the bar in the otherwise deserted room. He says, please, Thank come you. 
Sit down. Okay, so we go up to the bar. Oh, I go up to yeah. the bar. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the bar, get a drink. So, uh, just a... It's a long uh, walk, I need a drink. Uh, how far <laughs> away I get one too. is... Uh, I couldn't hear you, Kyrian. Pancon. What'd you say? I said, how far away is Kyrian from our location now? Not uh, probably <laughs> quite the distance, because he had to go two hours, or, like, four hours opposite of you guys, and you guys just got here. So he's, he's like, six, seven hours still away. Okay. Uh, I also venture to the bar and request uh, uh, some food and a beer. Okay, um, that's like 20 copper or something from any guys that is getting food and stuff. Uh, he, he's kind of... Yeah, I'll probably do that. Yeah, he, he's been eyeing you guys. Um, you can tell he's feeling a little paranoid. He, he's kind of twitchy. Um, he's kind of wary about your, uh, your presence here. And uh, he says, uh, what would he say to you guys? He'd be like, so uh, what, what, what kind of uh, business would you have here in Whitwick? I sure hope you're here to get rid of that creature that's been haunting us for the past few months. We've, we've tried to hire many mercenaries, but none come back. It's really starting to wear on us as a, a village. Well, uh, tell us about it. Uh, he pulls out, uh, he, he, he walks over to the, the other side of the, the inn, and uh, he pulls down a, a wanted flyer of, of a bounty, and he, he goes, there's all the information that we have and that you may need, and you recognize that it's the same bounty information that the other uh, mercenaries you've met uh, had. So it's the same oh, creature a... that they're trying to hunt. Is that the complete opposite direction of, of where the of where we we're headed? The, or was it kinda on the way? No, it was it was definitely on the way. You just need to go more south. Uh you need to from what you gather So we're closer but, to it. Yeah, you actually are closer to it. You just need to go deeper into the forest kind of thing. Oh, okay. Do you, what okay, type well, of I'm definitely interested in doing that. Yeah, I'm down for that. Okay. You gonna Talk to him about it or anything? Well, yeah, I'll yeah, tell him. Uh, yeah. I'll tell him get some more info about what it may be if they know. What yeah, anything will help get. right now. Because we didn't. Oh, uh, get intelligent. True. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to actually really learn about it. It just said, "Oh, go here. There's a thing." But have they seen it? Have they got any witnesses? Have they, even if it's just like a, a what if they tried before, it? sort of thing? So we know yeah. we shouldn't try that. Okay, Does so I'm gonna make you guys sketch? actually ask him these questions yes. instead of asking me as a DM. Yep, we're we're bombarding him with a bunch of questions. How did this happen? When did this happen? What does it look like? Okay, what have do, you done? Yeah, so do do we know, do we know what the creature looks like? <laughs> He's a starts polishing up a glass he's like we have no witnesses we anything that anyone has reported has been uh wisps of shadow and very quick movements uh guttural growl sounds but no one knows the uh the appearance of the creature and he's that is the best kind of sketch we've come up with over the i guess you'd say survivors that have uh, reported an incident but I must tell you, I'd be kind of wary of those reports because everyone else that has gone to look for this creature has never come back. I understand. Um, what kind of weapons did those people go with? They look no different than you. Some with large axes and swords. We've had spell casters. Normal common folk. <laughs> Nothing. Well, that's that's reassuring, sir. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, so has, how long has this been going on for? Years? Or uh, just weeks? Yeah, he says, um, an alarming amount of townsfolk have gone missing in the past few months. Uh, it started with the hunters who would go hunting, uh, in the holly forest, and, uh, they'd never return. Uh, then uh, the townsfolk started disappearing at night. So he started coming into the town. 
As far as we understand, uh, no bodies have been found, however. Uh, the only thing that we know of is, uh, besides townsfolk, people have been moving away, is uh, the ones we kind of figured moved away. We entering into their house, we found blood splatters. And uh, also, blood splatters have been found on the edges of the, the forest borders and further in. Only one person okay. claims to have seen the beast. And uh, he kind of nods in the distance. He's like, that gentleman sits over there. What is the gentleman's name? Quinn. Quinn Ashglade. Quinn. Okay. Thank you for your help. So who wants um, to... I'm gonna move. Yeah, um, yeah. Who wants to move over and talk to Quinn and ask questions? Who's got charisma? Um. That would be Echo. I have persuasion. I also got charisma. You got whoever's got good charisma is the one that should go talk to him. That is metagaming, though. Be aware of that. Whoever oh, wants to go talk on. to him can we talk got, to him. We got it. We got it. We got to know who's. Who's a people person? Oh right? yeah, you do. I'm just saying. If you're just I looking mean, for in actual the, points. In the past, yeah, I mean, if we're the 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 person with the charisma is the one that's going to be the people person. If we send in our it's rogue, always, it's always we know what happens kind of then. Thing. Yeah, I understand. You know? I understand. I was just I saying more in general. Point. Like, I don't mind that one, but if it's like, all right, who has the best, you know, investigation or whatever. I feel like it should be me and this. Okay. Um, I like should go to. Yeah. You're gonna go. You're gonna go talk to Quinn. Is it me and Echo going to talk to Quinn? Yeah. So I'm gonna. Uh, what I do. What I do is I'll move over to Pancog and I will tell her what information I've been told and then we we'll move over to Quinn and then um, see if we can get some information on what the creature looks like. Okay, uh, so as me and Miss Cre or Echo are walking over, I uh, stand in front of the gentleman and I say, hello! Uh, my name is Pancog, and we were hoping that you might be able to answer some questions that we might uh, need for our journey ahead. Okay. Um, as you, you approach, he's, he's a broad-shouldered man with a rough, tanned skin, and he's got a big, full beard. Uh, one of his arms is in a sling, and the other one uh, grips a frothy pint of uh, ale. Uh, he, he's, a, he's kind of a, a gruff man, a few words, and uh, he goes... <clears throat> Uh, how can I help? Uh, we were we were told that uh, you might have seen the beast that's been plaguing this town. Is that correct? He kind of furls his brow, kind of annoyed, and uh, lifts up his arm from. The, he takes his arm out of the sling, and he goes, "I don't know. You tell me." And you can see that uh, there's a big old bite mark in his arm. He says uh, he got that from the beast. He says that the, the flesh has been ripped from his arm. He says, it's dark, but it was about the size of a man, but it ran on all fours. It's very fast and strong. But yeah, I've seen the beast. Did you happen to see it, maybe the color of its eyes at all, or even the its claws, teeth, anything? It looks like a man. That's all I can remember. I uh, subtly uh, nod my head to Echo, trying to get her to see if she's got any more questions. I'm wondering if you can uh, give us a sketch at all, if you're any good at that. I'll give you a drink for, I'll buy you a drink for your troubles. Maybe two. Uh, he, he says, I appreciate the drink, but, uh, I ain't no artist. I can just say, uh, picture a man running on, on all fours. That's the best, <laughs> that's the best okay. example I can give you. <laughs> 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 <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> 
And was it was it just a man running on on four legs, or was it hairy man? Hairy man. <laughs> he kind of, he kind of, kind of thinks to himself. He says, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> Crazy man came up and bit me in the arm. I hadn't memorized his beauty marks. <laughs> he he said a man bit him in the arm. What? Um, you don't know this, Corey. You're all the way out. I was embarrassed. I dashing around all fours, leaping out on some random poor dude's arm. Hey, I mean, it could happen. And they I. I said you bit man's face off in Florida two years ago. Trindum, I said you might want to fix your cam a little bit. You got this is amazing. Off. You're getting your face cut off. <coughs> you catch that, Trindum? Rokex? You might want to fix oh, your it's cam. Me? Yeah. Um, uh, he, 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 so... He'll offer up some information to you guys. It says, as soon as this arm's healed, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back and see if I can catch that creature, but... uh. I ain't going back until it's healed. I've set out some bear traps in the woods to try to catch it, but, uh, so far, no luck. Seems to be wily and smart. Could we see if there might be any, uh, remnants of, uh, some magic on the, the wound? Uh, you can do a arcana check mm -hmm. if you want. Well, that sucked. Uh, you don't detect anything magical. Seeing as, Echo, seeing as Echo is also talking, could Echo roll an Arcana check? Because I think she's proficient in Arcana. You, you can roll an Arcana. You can, you can also roll uh, a nature uh, to find out, uh, like, what the origin of it is. You can roll a survival to see how bad it is. No, so yeah, just pick one of those, Echo, and... Okay, so... Uh -huh. Echo doesn't. Uh, Echo doesn't detect any uh, magical traces. Uh, Pancog, you roll survival. Uh, you, the the wound is pretty bad. It it got down to the muscle. There's bits of muscle that have been torn out. Um, so you know it's pretty bad. But so far, it looks like uh, it's been dressed well, so it's not being infected. Um, and but it is very fairly fresh. It's like within the last couple days. Oh, also, what time is it now? Uh, what it's time about it 6 p.m., 7 p.m. It's, it's getting late. Okay, then. So about now would be the time that we'd want to be heading out to prepare for when it is late enough to catch the beast. Um, we, we need a big plan first. We need, yeah, sounds we need like to... a very dangerous... <laughs> okay, I kind of sit up from the bar and look over because I've been eavesdropping this entire time because it's literally <laughs> very... Very like nosy little rogue, my dudes. So, um, kind of um, calls out. So, is there anywhere to buy any supplies around here now at this time? Because it is late. Um, supply or you're, I guess. Oh wait, you're talking to um the in Quinn. You're, oh, you, went, to, you all um, went to Quinn. To Quinn about no, no, because I'm at the bar. They were talking to him. I was eavesdropping from the bar, so I call over from. The bar. I'm still okay. standing there. I just turn around and shout. So, is there anywhere to get any equipment, any supplies at this time? Um, he kind of looks over, just confused, like, "Were you talking to me? Who are you? I'm talking to these people," kind of thing. Uh, the innkeeper looks at you. He's like, "Depends." Or different voice. Depends on what you're looking for. What do you? What, what are you looking to purchase? Traps. Anything that would help us hunt this beast? Uh, sure. We'll say, uh, sure. I suppose you could talk to a, a blacksmith. Like I said, this was a, this was a town of many hunters. And then, uh, uh, Quinn speaks up and he's like, Is the blacksmith in the inn or are they at the. No, nah, they're in a different area area of town. Okay. Uh, Quinn does speak up and he's like, I'd be happy to assist you with any traps you might want. Uh, most of mine have already laid out myself, but uh, many of the hunters have left the town. I'm I'm the the only one left. Uh, so we might be able to, you know, uh, get, I'm not gonna say ransack. We may be able to acquire some additional traps from the uh 
The abandoned huts. Hey, when he says that, um, I'm going to do a bit of forward thinking here. Um, thank you. Um, we really appreciate it. But can you do us one more favor? Would you be able to maybe draw and uh, lay out where you have already put your trap so that if we do encounter the beast, oh, we absolutely. know exactly where they are and where not to stand? Absolutely. I've got a feeling that's going to be a thing. We won't see the traps and we'll end up walking across one. That'd be sure. Um... Uh, as, a, as a side note, I, I would like to speak up uh, to him. I, I say, well, uh, I, I would like you to know that uh, there is another one of us. It is my animal companion. Uh, his name is Kyrian, uh, but he is a, a panther. So if you see a, a black panther, uh, or a small, tiny black cat. Uh, just know that it, it means you no harm. It's it's just trying to make its way back. Sure. He's like, oh, that's great to know. You might want to see if you can pass that around town so uh, you don't lose your pre precious little feline. Okay, so with that, can I make my way to, like, outside? the uh, the tavern and just absolutely just scream out I have an animal companion it is Black Panther and its name is Kyrian and I love it dearly and if any of you kill it I will kill you thank you that is all you're gonna rely on people around this fairly decent sized town to all hear that and understand it and trust it uh for the most part, yes, but I, I will also ask the uh, the tavern owner to pass it on. But uh, I do shout it very, very loudly, like very, very loudly. It's a it's a loud town. Remember, all their windows and doors are boarded up, so it might be difficult mm -hmm. for it to carry pretty far. Uh, the the, the, the innkeeper will respond. He's like, cabin? I'll tell any or he, wrong voice. I'll tell anyone that comes in, but uh, unfortunately, I, I've got duty to, to attend to myself, and I can't go around town myself and just letting everyone know. Okay, so as we, I guess, make our way around town, I'll also pass along, but for the most part right now, I think the shouting works because it got people's attention, real. some people's attention. So they'll start talking about rumors about the crazy white-headed half elf. I know, sweetie. I'm so screaming so in the middle of the road. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get a fully off her. You're good. I Are think you, we um... should, uh... Go ahead. I think we should, uh... Um... Kind of post up. If it, Since it's coming into town at night, I think we should post up and, um, try to catch a glimpse of it. Be, be ready, but not, um... You know, kind of watch and see what it does. Um, so that we can have a, a proper plan to, uh, capture or kill this thing. Okay. Uh, yes. is that what you guys want to do? Yeah, you, uh, oh. you want to rest up? You don't, you do, gonna talk around to other people in town? What are you doing? <clears throat> Just uh, As for the, uh, familiar, I think we should maybe no either knock on doors or slip notes underneath the door. Uh, well, I was going to want to see if I could acquire more arrows, as I did use quite a bit during the uh, uh, attack with uh, the rats and some of the bandits, I believe. Okay. Are you remembering to gather your arrows after the battle, too? No. Yeah, so you can you can recollect half of the arrows yep. you use after each battle. Well, that yeah. would be nice to know. I know that for now, for Yeah, <laughs> I'll say you can you could recollect half the ones you used and uh you you would have to go f talk to uh, an armor or the the hunters. Actually, uh we'll say you asked Quinn that uh, since he was a hunter, he obviously has bow and arrow stuff and uh he tells you he's like oh yeah the uh the, the blacksmith down the way that they should be able to outfit you with some uh materials that you'll need so as and as far as as far as the cat 
I think what you should do is I think you should post up because the the cat um should be a few uh, we we kind of anticipate that it's going to be a few hours. I think an hour or so before you anticipate this cat coming, you should post up outside of the town so that you can have your cat with you and and people don't get worried as you're as it, it, of this panther just walking through town, you know. I think that's going to be the best uh method of keeping your companion safe yeah a, a post or yeah because yeah, i think yeah. spending time passing this information out is is probably not the best use of our time so if you if you just i mean if, if say in 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 five hours if we're waiting six hours and five hours you go post up a half a mile outside of town um your cat can come up to you and then you can be with your cat inside the town. True. As soon as I, I'm assuming Kyrian's done with his Give task, back up. he's going to uh, turn back into a small, tiny kitten, Kyrian. How long did it take us to walk from the encounter with um, Grizz and Samson um, to the town now? Uh, what did I say? You guys walked, you took a long rest. It was supposed to take a couple days. Um, so, but we just skipped over the the days of you guys walking. Um, so yeah. okay. Well, in that case, I don't think Kyrian will be back tonight. No, -uh. it won't be back tonight. So for tonight, I don't think we should worry about it. I think we should do the word of mouth like Pankot has already done. That that should get it out enough to begin with. Um, but for now, we should focus on setting up, um, resupplying, getting what we need, um, to fight this. What I'm assuming to be a werewolf. Um, and then, because, think about it, even if it would take a couple of hours for Kyrian to get back, it would be around midnight by then. Um, so, we're best off sleeping here tonight after we've done some recon or something like that against this uh, werewolf, shall we just say. And then, in the morning, start getting some posters, maybe, do some more word of mouth, and whoever we speak to tonight, we should always mention the animal companion. So, when we see the blacksmith... Make sure we bring it up. When we see anyone else, make sure we bring it up, just so word is spread. I think that's the best yeah. way. It's gonna be me back, yeah, so. we need a proper plan. I could imagine them being, like, yeah. <laughs> kind of scared of a, a panther if they see it around, yeah. especially when they have had this wild animal attacking them, and they're just like, yeah. oh, yeah, that could be the one. <laughs> and they're like, if no, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's like, it's like and then it's really like, enough time to be, you know... Missing with this, we've got plenty of time before Kyrian gets back. He might not even be back tomorrow, considering it took two days for us to get here. So, over time, we should let them know that there will eventually be an either big kitter or a little kitter coming through. Um, <laughs> but for now, I think yeah, we, should, we should just focus on this beast, because that's what's causing the problem right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, are you guys going to go around knocking on doors, see if, if anyone's going to listen to you? Well, I thought we were going to go and see the um, the blacksmith first, see if we can get any sort of supplies. Um, and we were going to we were going to start spreading more information to those tomorrow. But we will talk to the blacksmith about um, Kyrian. Okay, just to let him know. Um, the blacksmith is, you know, 150 yards away or something. Um, do you guys go knock on any doors or something on your way, or do you just go directly to the blacksmith? Uh, how many doors are on the way? Like, 30? how, like, compressed is the town? Oh, okay. So quite it, it's a, a pretty decently-sized town. Um, are any... Seeing as it is a little bit later, um, like I'm guessing it's, yeah, still about 7, 8-ish. Um, are any of the lights still on that would indicate that people are home and awake? Um, it'd be difficult to tell since there's no way to see in because the windows and stuff are all boarded up. Oh, yeah, uh, the only way you'd true. be able to know is okay. if someone was in, like, the immediate vicinity of a door... Or a window, and you can maybe see a flicker of candlelight through the cracks, but everything's pretty heavily okay, well, reinforced. Do we see any houses like Question. that? <clears throat> How loud can our barbarian be? You don't have a barbarian. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. We have a fighter. Yeah. Fighter. Is he? Is he very loud? I thought Rogue Cactus is a barbarian. <laughs> no, he's a fighter. I'm a fighter. Ah. You're just a Goliath. So how loud yeah. is the Goliath? Uh, not much louder than a normal sized person. Mm. 
I mean, you can knock on doors so and see I if people answer. Should... I think we should uh, find some places to to post up and gather some info. And I think I think that's what that's what Rokax is gonna do. Um, he's not very good at hiding, quite honestly. So um, I'm gonna spend some no time. Time. I'm gonna spend some time uh, uh, finding a good spot to hide, maybe, um, and, and that I can have kind of a good view of of. Maybe some entrances in the town, maybe some uh, areas where the thing has obviously been scratching it. I don't know if there's any more concentrated areas of damage from this thing, but uh, I want to try to prepare to have a good hiding spot that can hide my massive frame. Okay. <laughs> um, we should... Um, that's what we the kids should call it. We should look in um, some of the houses where the beast has attacked people, where the blood is. Um, maybe see if there's some kind of evidence left behind, um, how big the beast is, paw prints, anything like that. Maybe a mm. tooth. Yeah, okay. Smart. So yeah, any, we'll go like towards that. the blacksmith and any house that stands out with having scratch marks or blood or any sort of contact. With um, the creature I mean, we're hunting, you could I reckon we possibly could possibly ask it. the innkeeper maybe if he knows who's been attacked. Yeah. Totally Let's not DM the knowledge the there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're going to ask the. Okay, uh, I guess, I guess we'll go back to ask the, uh, the innkeeper, yeah. Or recent <laughs> uh, attacks on <laughs> any of the houses. <laughs> sure, uh, he'll give you some information. <laughs> he says, ah. Uh, most recent ones, I'd say, uh, dear little Emily, uh, she, about four houses down, uh, Miss Muriel, uh, she might have some information, uh, she, she's just past the town square, uh, near the blacksmith, uh, my name, what was the name again, sorry? Uh, the second one? Yeah. Muriel. Uh, I'd hate to recommend, but, uh, old man Arthur seems to, uh, believe he knows the identity. But, uh, be careful with that one. Those and are the ones that would stand out in my mind right now. So, why should we be careful of old man Arthur? He is an old man. Fairly chatty, <laughs> lovely gentleman. Uh, uh. But I believe he suffers from, uh, <clears throat> maybe not hallucinations is the right word, but, uh, delusions? Nah, more of, uh, he's, he's, he's kind of forgetful, I guess we could call that. He, he, he gets his, uh, his brain wires all up in a knot sometimes. That makes so total one would sense. say unreliable. I don't know. It's, it's information. He claims to have seen it. I, w I would definitely trust uh, Quinn over old man Arthur, but you asked, I tell. Okay. All right. Thank you for your help once again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess uh, we'll leave the, the inn and start making our way towards the blacksmith, but we'll go to, he said Emily was only four houses down. So I think we should go and see Emily first because um, we do have some time to waste anyway. Rokax is all positions keeping an eye out um so yeah i'm gonna start making my way lucius gonna start making his way over to um emily's house okay <clears throat> is um, anyone else coming with me start going to the people's houses too okay. you all going with lucius or are you guys splitting up what you doing oh well i'm going with uh lucius because well, we're all going to the same place i guess emily's yeah. then muriel's then arthur and then yeah and then blacksmith Oh wait, before we go, um, considering that Rokax is already kind of like perching himself behind somewhere or on top of something, um, I quickly call out and say, is there anything you need from the blacksmith? Because you won't be able to be there to purchase it if you're up there, so I can buy it for you. What you a need good rogue. Uh, <laughs> giving his money away. Are you sure you're a rogue? I have, Turn on, I have everything I need. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, I call out, how about a beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. 
So you guys make your way to money back tomorrow. Yeah. You make your way to Emmeline. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you you're outside of her house. Okay, so I'll knock on the door, give it a little. Um. You hear nothing behind the door, uh. But after, you know, seems like an eternity, but it's more like twenty seconds. You kind of see a creak in the window or in the the door and uh a young slender woman with long straight jet black hair and brown eyes uh kind of peers out and it's a child uh probably in her teens uh maybe 14 15 kind of peers out let's see what do you oh god damn it what do you want it's almost curved you you should be inside Please leave. Um, don't, uh, don't be uh, afraid or worried. Um, Lucy takes a knee down to get like at her level as well. You know, big scary elf rogue dude. Down there. <laughs> Just get down a little bit. Um, <laughs> Go on, Echo. We were just um, wanted to uh, solve a problem that you've been having in the town. And uh, we were told that you have some information um, and you've seen the beast or you've experienced the beast. And When you mention the beast, you see her beast. eyes start to well up. And she's like, I'm Wait, sorry. Are, you, are you here to, to avenge mummy and daddy? Oh, that's good. Uh, as, as soon as a few seconds after they say that, this uh, a little boy about age of five or six comes, runs up and squeezes his way in between um, the door and uh, Emily and says, Mommy and Daddy! And then you see his face drop when he realizes that uh, you're not Mommy or Daddy. Oh, mm, that is sad. I'm just standing in the background shaking his head again. I'm fucking a shit show that the uh, the rogue is about to put himself through. <laughs> Who are they just living in this house by themselves or You don't know yet. Um are you here alone or is there an adult here? She hesitates and says No, it's it's just us. <laughs> Right, Emily, I'm gonna have to let you're gonna have to be really brave um, for your parents' memory, and you're gonna have to tell me what you've seen so that we can we can get revenge. Um, and if you can do that, that would be very, very helpful. Very helpful. She kind of she opens the door a little bit more. Actually, no. Um, the little boy says. And he tries to push his way through the door more, and uh, he he manages to open it. Uh, but Emmeline manages to like try to shut it quicker. But you can see her whole frame now, and uh, she, she's Sam, please stop, please go go back to your room. And uh, she well, since the door is open, she kind of peers outside hesitantly and looks around because it's getting dark. And she's like, please come inside. So I'll, I'll get off my knee and kind of walk in, kind of egging everyone else to come with me. Okay. 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 Right. Uh, yeah. she, she leads you in. Um, Lucio, I'll have you uh, roll a perception. Ooh. Okay. Proficient. Let's go. <laughs> Didn't <Ouch>. matter. <laughs> uh, you don't notice. You're more focusing on uh, the kids and uh, watching the little boy run off into the the corner. Obviously, not listening to his sister, but he's not getting into trouble, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, Pancog or Echo, you or Corin, you guys can uh, roll a investigation or a perception, your choice. Doesn't matter for me. <laughs> I should probably stop telling you guys when to roll all these all the time. Um, oh, Ooh. nice roll. Um, I know, I know something. You can always, you can always use passives. Yeah, Don't I know about passives. Um, let's see. Okay, so Echo, 
I don't um, see nothing. You are able to notice that uh, there isn't any like a, any dirty dishes or anything nearby. Um, you see one of the cupboards has been left open, and uh, there's like half a loaf of bread in there. Um, from what you are able to tell is um, they're quickly running out of food, and uh, the, but they're just trying to live the best they can without their parents being around. Okay. This is a horrible situation for them to be in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this um, is em sad. Emmeline kind of walks off. Um, she she kind of scoots her um her brother away. And says, Sam, please go. Let's go to your room. And uh, she kind of leaves him. But I want to see mommy and daddy. He's like, you know that's not possible. Please let's go play with your blocks. And um. He kind of goes off to his room, and she walks off to the corner, and uh, she comes back uh, with a hunting knife in her in her hands, and says, uh, "This this knife has been part of my family for a very long time, and is a memento that we have of my father. Please, if if you are able to to take care of this beast and rid us of the agony that is causing us." I would be. Ha I don't have any money, but I'd be happy to give you this as a reward. I, you can't I, take I, that from you. Yeah, I'm not I, taking that. I'm not taking it. Yeah. What, what I will do, Lushu, without even saying a word, is going to stand up. He's going to leave the house, um, make his way back over to the inn, and um, start getting, start buying some food um, to take back. Um, um I, just for the like the evening or so, so they've each got a decent my, the night. I say, um, you you don't have to give us that knife. We know it's very uh precious to you and uh that you've had it. it it's your father's. Um, but we would be glad to get rid of this uh beast for you. She, her she kinda tears up and says Please take care of it. This is the only thing that I can <clears throat> I can offer, and I want to make sure that my family is avenged. I, I, I don't want you guys to just... All all the previous people have either run off or never come back. I want... I'm trying to think of something that she, she would say. She wants you guys to fulfill what you came to do, and so she feels like she has to give something to solidify that kind of deal. Um, so that's what she's trying to convey. I just can't think of how to do it. Uh, how much are two rations of food at the end? Um, I think five silver each is what it was. I don't remember. Uh, it, that, it, that's in the book somewhere. You can look it up if you want. Is he buying food for the kids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of he, is. he is not. Okay. So I've. <laughs> a Hufflepuff. I just bought two um, rations of food. I won't add them to my inventory because I'm going to come back to the house now and hand them to. That's fine. The kids, so they they've got some food. Yeah. Uh, she she starts crying. Thank you. And uh, she kind of walks over to Sam and brushes his hair back, and uh, sits him down at his little table and um gives him his food. Thank. Be sure to thank the nice people, Sam. Thank you. He starts dancing in his <laughs> in his seat. He's, he's like humming to himself. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. As he's eating his... That's why Lushu does what he does. Yeah, he starts <laughs> munching on his foods of, uh, of jerky. I asked a little girl, uh, is there any special talent that you have that that is unique to Gigi and your brother? By chance. She looks at you questioning like, special talent. Like drawing, uh, perf like a performance, singing... Something along those lines. She she kind of gets shy real quick and drops her head and you know starts kicking her foot across the ground a little bit. And she's like, "Well, I do like to sing. I used to sing all the time when when mummy was around, but it, we're just kids. We so we don't have how much. About, how about this? We will take care of the beast 
in exchange for a private show of you singing for us. Does that sound fair? She gets uh, up. She gets very nervous and kind of closes in. She's like, I don't know. I've never sang in front of the people before. Okay. I, I'm just trying to be nice here to the, the little girl guys. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Get, like, figure out, like, hey, go give us our, the knife. That, that's a family heirloom. If, if that's really Ooh, what you idea. want. I have an idea. I have an idea. Lucy puts his head up and says, well, if you are too nervous, um, we have been traveling together for a while now. And when we are resting at our campfire, there's one thing we don't have. We have company, we have food, we have water, we have shelter. But we don't have a jolly song to sing. So how about, as payment, you were to just write us a song on a piece of paper, and we'll take that as payment. Uh, Add a smile. Okay. She says, uh... I... I, I suppose so. I could try that. I'll, I can do my best. But that's all we ask for. But for now, we need to know, is there any more information, any small detail that might seem really little, it could really help us? Is there anything else you can tell us whatsoever? She shakes her head and says, I'm sorry. There's nothing else I could give. They, we just woke up one morning and my parents were gone. I wish I could help more. Okay, well, in that case, for now, we must be going. We must be get ready to fight this beast. Um, the more time we spend here, the less time we have to prepare. So, go on. Did your parents go hunting um, after this beast? No, they, they just disappeared from the house one night. Okay, so Lucy's gonna get, like, just get stuff together and leave. And kind of just takes a look back to make sure that the kids are gonna be alright. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, um... How much is so we... this, this inn? Does it have rooms for the night? Yeah. Or is it just a bar? Yeah, because nobody's coming how, how into much, town. How much, how much is it for a room for the night? Uh, I really should have the, those, <laughs> those <laughs> stupid tables open every time we play. Um, it, it's, it's a very simple room. They're, you know, they'll let you stay here um, for free as long as you take care of the beast. Otherwise, it'll be, I don't know. Two silver a night per person. Two silver a night. Okay, then. Well, I'm going to go to the inn. Um, without telling the children or anything, I'm going to go to the inn. I'm going to talk to the, um, the barman, um, and I'm going to give him um, eight silver. So that's two nights. Um, so what's, and for him to go and collect the children later on to bring them to somewhere that's warm, safe, and they can be looked after because they shouldn't be in a house by themselves. Yeah. And the beast going around. So that's sixty-seven silver left. There we go. Okay. Uh, he, he takes the money. The... He takes the money from you, but he also says, he's "Like, all right, I, they can stay here, but I ain't no babysitter. They are welcome to stay." I look up and say, "You don't think you realize how mature this little girl is? She's been looking after her five-year-old brother. I'm sure she can look after themselves perfectly fine." Yeah, uh, no he's aware of that he knows who way. she is and what has happened, yeah. but he just wanted to clarify that he's not going to be, you know, acting like a babysitter to them. Like, you haven't got to be a babysitter, but we just ask that you keep an eye on them for now. Make sure they're safe. Fair enough. Okay, so now we should go and see um, Muriel. Muriel, Muriel? Yeah. yeah. Wait after our rogue is bleeding heart. Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> Let me do this! It kind of sucks that none of the, the villagers would take the kids in. Especially with her. Yeah. Like, what the kids. hell? Well, <laughs> yeah, like, if you, especially if you with her parents it, not being there. Well, they don't like, know that, yeah. but they also... 
the the village can be wary of anyone that has been attacked because they don't know it might, might be a bad omen around yeah, it could maybe be a bad they, omen yeah it maybe be, they just hey, think it's a curse yeah or it's an investigation it's like how do, all these deaths keep occurring around this area so yeah they're like <laughs> something's they drawing know. them there yeah, maybe yeah. they the one of the people are the beasts you know so people have their reasons well we do know that it's a man and Quit. it's a 14, 15 year old little girl and a five year old little boy. It can't be one of those. So we know those guys aren't the beast at least. So that's a little bit off their heads, I guess. A little less worry. So you uh, um, came to Muriel? Yes. Okay. That's Muriel's. Um, you guys get to Muriel's house. And uh, like all the other places, it's boarded up. Uh, you do see some uh, a flicker underneath the door frame. Uh, they're obviously pretty close. But uh, you don't hear anything inside. Okay, well, Lucia will go and knock on the door again. Okay. Little groovy knock. Um, a few seconds pass, and uh, suddenly the door flies open, and uh, you get a, a pitchfork right to your face. Just like, what the crap? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Don't you know what time it is? <laughs> it's time you put that pitchfork down. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> The pitchfork's in your face. Uh, a middle-aged woman with red eyes and <laughs> tear-stained cheeks is uh, behind the pitchfork, and she's kind of shaking <clears throat> with the pitchfork. She's worried, but uh, she's obviously very upset. Like, what are you doing here? We, we've come to help, not hinder. We've come to help, not hinder. We've come to help. <laughs> I'm still there, just... <laughs> I'm trying to find any information about this uh, beast. Um, so we can likely, uh, kill it. And if you could please put down the pitchfork she, now, that'd be great. She doesn't move the pitchfork, we but, just uh, want some information. she shifts her glance over to Corrin and says, You here to hear help Gregory? She kind of eyes Lucio and slowly lowers the pitchfork. Gregory? <laughs> it's like a little sigh of relief. <laughs> Um, she goes, don't, don't she's like, like, she's, yeah, she, she turns her back to you, but she leaves the door open, obviously allowing you to come in. So I'm a bit weary at this point. I kind of edge for Echo and Pankog to, uh, and Corin to go ahead in front of me because I'm just going to take a little <laughs> step back from this lady. She has terrified me. I don't trust her with her pitchfork. Okay. Um... You guys are. Red eyes. She, she leads you over to a a table and some chairs that you guys can sit. So who is this Gregory? Um, you speak of. She kind of puts her head back and rolls her eyes up, trying to fight back tears, and she says, "Gregory was my son. He was uh, he was killed last night." And she kind of <laughs> tries to maintain her composure and lets out a couple whimpers and a. Uh, she says, uh, I've done what I can to clean up his room, but I can't bear to go in there. <laughs> like, um, Lucia will uh, pipe up and say, so what happened? Was it the beast that everyone's been worried about? Or was it something else? It has to have been. There's no, there's no way anyone else could have been able to do that. His room is right upstairs. Have you, have you seen his body at all? Or is he just missing? Are you assuming they, that he's no dead? No bodies are ever know? left behind. And she buries her head, her head in her hands. Did this happen in the bedroom? Yes. Wait. I just... How old? I just hope he didn't suffer. How old is Do your you son? Do you mind? Gregory... He was too young. He was only 22. Two. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so maybe he had a bit of a mama complex and just had to leave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was only 22. I mean, an overbearing okay. mother. Just like, oh, I'm going to go away in the forest. His mom <laughs> is getting a little older. He could be just one taking care of her. I was think yeah, Here I was true. thinking this kid was like, Yeah, I was thinking it was a kid. Five then, like, or seven. Woman, okay. So I was like, well, let's drop it a little bit. Like, he was 17. He's, he's not 21. 20. He's 17 now. Oh, he's 17. Oh, he's 17. Okay. 
I mean, uh, I'm, still, I'm still old enough to look like a full grown man. Yeah, but you know, it makes Rude. a little more sense that he's living at home, helping mom. Hang on. Um, so I, I say, I say to um, Muriel. Um, so the last time you saw him, he was in his room. Yes, last night. Well, do you mind if we take a look, see if there's any clues at all? Of course, his his went, his bedroom is right upstairs. Okay, so I kind of look over and say, does anyone want to stay down yeah. here with Muriel to keep her company whilst me and someone else look? I'll, I'll go up and look. I don't okay. do pit books. Okay, well, I guess Pancock's going to be the one talking to Muriel <laughs> because Corin <laughs> Corin has the conversation no, skills. We should totally leave Corin to talk to this one. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Echo, I guess we'll go upstairs um, and we'll... Um, start going into uh, his room. Stop that yawning, Trindum. You're going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Okay. I'm so tired. I know. Snap. Just giving you crap. Um, okay, so you guys, you go upstairs to investigate this room. Yep. Um, uh, there's only one room upstairs. Uh, you, kinda, you open the door and uh, you are greeted with an entire bedroom covered in blood. Uh, uh, what? Okay. This is not usual. That's for sure. It's, is you, this you where are, she found When you were walking kid? throughout the house, everything is in perfect condition. Except this bedroom. You can... Anyone that is obviously up invest, or looking at the bedroom, uh, you notice uh, the bedroom window looks like it was torn off because it was obviously reinforced but it actually was broken through and has been re-reinforced there's the original boarding of the window is up and now there's like two by fours crisscrossing it to put it back up can we tell whether or not the window was broken from the inside or the out is there any glass outside. left on the yeah. floor or it was broken from the outside mm -hmm. So someone oh. broke into the room. Mm -hmm. How tall is this house? Like, I mean, it's a two-story like, house. How big is it? Is 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 his um room on the two-story? Yeah, it's on the second like, floor. A... What the crap? Well, what okay. Got to think about it, we are thinking okay. about the werewolf creature. His ability to climb. Yeah. Is amazing. <laughs> so I had a bit of a theory. I was thinking maybe Gregory was the monster, considering all the blood was in his room. But if the window's broken from the outside, then uh, is there a way to tell whether or not the blood is human or animal? Um, you can run a, a, a survival check. Um, you should probably also roll an investigation. Which one first, survival or investigation? Either way, doesn't matter. Uh, I'll do survival because I'm proficient Can in we... that. Uh, uh, that's not bad. Okay. I'm gonna Go. roll an investigation. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, so your proficiency, uh, or your your, your survival roll, you are able to deduce that um, it it's obviously still fresh since she said it happened last night. Um, but it's it's very sticky. Um, your the echo you are able to determine. Um, you find a you find slash marks on the bed that were made by a, a very sharp object. Um, okay. Okay. The uh, the nope. Nobody has. Well, we'll say this in retrospect that Muriel um, didn't hear anything. Um, when this occurred. Is um, there any uh, blood drag marks? The, the entire room is covered in blood. How could you not hear the window breaking, though? She was drunk. <laughs> 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 or, or very in, in a deep sleep. No. Or maybe <laughs> she's the beast. Oh, she could be the beast. She's got red eyes. That's up and all. Oi! Yo, hold up. I have red eyes. That's actually. That's actually. You're the beast! I'm going to instantly accuse Bangkok. Well, he said that she had red eyes because she was crying. Yeah. 
So. Oh, so red eyes is in like the yeah. white. Red eyes, yeah, tear yeah. stained yeah. cheeks. Not, not the pupils. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I thought you meant the pupils were red. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. did I. I was like, hold up. Busting <laughs> out the point. syringe on here. I so thought it was weird how he said red eyes before. Yeah. I literally pictured her having red eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought red eyes. What the crap is with your eye? <laughs> Okay, um, well, with the slash mark on the bed, um, whenever blood's spilt in an area, there's usually, like, a lot more of it in one little area. So, with the slash on the bed, does it look like someone was on the bed when it happened, or does it look like someone just ripped it? Is there more blood on the bed than anywhere else? Or is it just completely covered? The, the whole area? Blood. You can't tell where it started, but there's blood everywhere. Oh, okay. So there's not really much we can tell mm -mm. at the moment. And the blood is okay. sorry, and the blood so is coagulated. Yeah, yeah so we know it happened like a while ago. Uh, um, you guys investigate like outside, or you just kind of okay. Well, I'll take a look. Out, I'll take a look outside the broken window to see if I can see anything that would have helped someone climb up, or well, the, maybe the window has been reinforced again. Remember, you can't look out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so Okay, is I know this is a bit of a silly question considering the room is covered in blood. Um, but is there anything that instantly strikes me as being completely out of place? Just I know that, that should not be there. Like, is there I like know. a brick on the floor? Is there anything? No, because uh, the the she said that she couldn't uh, face going in his bedroom yet. How come the windows boarded up already? And well, she did say that she w she went in there to try to clean up. And obviously, she's got to board up the window again to keep from True. whatever's coming back in to come and get her. See, um, I, I, just, I can't imagine a parent going into their kid's room yeah. after yeah. they True. died and seeing all that blood and trying to board the window. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, seeing as there's nothing else we can really find at the moment, um, this is where my roguiness is actually going to come into you know, play. Um, I'm going to suggest to Echo that she goes downstairs, tells everyone what we've just um, found, um, ask her, oh, I'm putting in character, um, Echo, can you go downstairs, let the others know what we have found, um, and tell them that we're um, Whilst you do that, I'm going to take a look in some of the other rooms, see if there's anything I can find that might give some information. Ladies the only other room is on the first floor, and it's uh, Muriel's room. Oh, so the, the the second floor is just, just the a room. Of... Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, in that case, yeah, I'll go downstairs with Echo. Then I guess, yeah, just relay that. Um, so yeah, I suggest to Echo okay. that we both go downstairs and tell the people what we found. Um, it's just a blood room. Yeah, <laughs> we, just we, a blood we room. Found, yeah, yeah, we found a it's scene for hospital. Blood room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll head downstairs and tell everyone what we've um, found. I recommend they don't go up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you go look out outside at all? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look outside. I'll go around the back and see if there's been any boxes stacked up or any footprints, tracks, anything okay. at all that stands out. Uh, we we need to work out if someone got in or if it was someone getting out. Well, we said the window was it... broken from the outside, yep. so someone obviously someone got busted in. in. Yeah, so the demon... Okay, so it's, it cannot be him then. 100% cannot yep. be him. Uh, go ahead and roll investigation, Lucio. Ooh. Nice. Oh! Holy shit, nice roll. Um, oh! Okay, so uh, you start investigating outside the window uh, from the second story, and uh, you are able to notice that uh, there, there, there's some smears of blood on the back of the house beneath the window. Um, the smear seems to continue into the forest just beyond. And uh, as you kind of follow the smears of blood, um, you're also able to notice that um, there's some ripped clumps of glass and uh, some finger-made drag marks in the dirt. Okay. So they're finger-made, not humanoid okay. this time. Okay. Well, no, like, finger could be any sort of, like, nail sort of thing. It just looks like it's dragging. Uh, if mud, it would look the same, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so in that case, um, after seeing that, I'll turn back around, make my way back to Muriel's house, and I'll let everyone know what I've just found. So, um, guys, I think you should come with me. I've just gone around the back, and I've found, um, 
blood trail. Following it, I found some um, claw marks and some glass. Maybe we should follow this. So that's you guys. Okay, yes, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Insane. <laughs> so are you guys going to just go follow the forest then? Uh, yes, anything to get away from Muriel, Muriel and her sobbing. <laughs> Can we borrow your pitchfork? <laughs> I mean, if she kind of oh, shakes her head and she's like, how, else am I <laughs> or, how am I supposed to defend myself? <laughs> good, good, good point. We seem to be fine with it. Yes. You seem v very well. You seem far more well armed than I am. Why would you need my pitchfork? <laughs> <laughs> no reason. It's, it's fine. Honey. <laughs> no reason, she says. No reason. So she looks at it, she's like, I wanted to play with the pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay. wanted her to be disarmed from the pitchfork. I wanted to go at Lucy's neck with a pitchfork. God damn it. <laughs> so it's it's about 8 o'clock at night. It's starting to get dark. Are you guys um actually going to go Ooh. through the forest or what In are you doing? That case Maybe it's best we, because if, if we are going to follow this, there's a high chance we're going to find something because, you know, that's just the way the story goes, I guess. But because um, it is getting late, we should go and see the blacksmith. We should maybe go and see Old Man Arthur later, maybe tomorrow, because he was unreliable, according to um, Quinn. Um, so maybe we should go to see the blacksmith quickly, see if we, he has anything that can help us out, and then make our way over there as quick as possible. Yeah. And maybe we should go back and tell Rokax that we're doing it so he can come with us. Because he's still perched up somewhere <laughs> um, looking over the city. So, so I was wondering if you guys were going to go chase yeah, no, we got you, dude. We got you. Me, right? <laughs> we like, got you, dude. Leave here, your fighter. I'll I'll leave your meat back. shield. Fighter, don't worry. I'll never forget you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. So, oh, actually, in that case, should we... Oh, seeing as Rokax doesn't actually need anything from the blacksmith, I think we should just go... Um, and then when we come back, pull Rokax down to make our way out. Yeah. Does that sound okay to everyone? Sure. Yep. Yep, that sounds fine. Yeah, yeah. So you guys are going to yeah. go rest at the inn then? No, we're going to go see the blacksmith. Oh. Yep. Uh, I'll, blacksmith, just, yeah. I'll say um, we can just skip through that because I don't want to <laughs> RP yeah. a, a blacksmith session. We'll just say um, Oh, okay. you, you kind of... You reveal to her that you're trying to catch this thing, and uh, she, she, she gives you some arrows and stuff, just free of charge as long as you kill or manage to take care of the beast. Um, okay. Easy. Yeah. I was gonna see if she had like anything to, not per se trap it, kind of trap it. Like I don't think they have any bear traps, but maybe something close to it. Uh, um, we do have a picture of um, where Quinn put all of his bear traps. Yep. So maybe we could pick one or two up. Um, yeah, the, we could the, definitely the, set yeah, one of yeah. those. And she, has, I... she also has two bear traps you guys can use. Yeah. Ooh, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a couple of bear traps then. Huh? Oh, no, those, <laughs> I'm assuming you just yeah, say, no, can I... we borrow them? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so you have two bear traps and... Uh, Pancog, you have your arrows restocked. They won't okay. actually run them. Um, are you guys good? Yep. yep. Awesome. Yep. You're going to go... Okay, then. So we'll we'll head back to where um, Rokax is just vibing on the roof or behind whatever. Um, I'll explain to him all that we've just learned so that he's kept up, uh, caught up, sorry, um, and suggest that we follow this blood trail that I found behind the house. Yeah, I'll go with you guys. Awesome. Yep, yep. So you guys are going back to the inn? Oh, uh, wait, are we going to go back to the inn? Or yeah, are we going to go doing? follow... That's that, what um, I want to go and follow that blood trail, because considering it is now 8 o'clock, well, about, what, 9 o'clock now after the talk with the Black Tail, that sort of stuff, now's around the time when the sightings have been happening, so I think now would be the best time to go and follow those tracks that we found. Um, Even. also, I'll ask Rokax, um, Rokax, did you see anything, um, whilst you were scoping the town? Did you notice any areas that may have been more active than others? What uh, did I do, um? You can, uh, <laughs> you, you, I would assume that you had active perception up, so you can go ahead and roll if you want. Where is my mouse? There it is. 
I'm gonna roll investigation because I, I think I was I was. Would it be or is it perception? It yeah, because be... you were just watching for anything out of the ordinary to happen, right? I was I was looking for uh, concentrated areas of damage. If it was if there was anything that was uh, oh, okay. any places that seemed more. Um, I got you. Yeah, go ahead. Like roll investigation. Was attacking that area more. Yeah, go oh, ahead. My investigation sucks balls, though. Yeah, you didn't find anything yeah. significant. No, I'm, no, I'm you, dumb. You, what you were no. able, well, it's not necessarily that you just rolled badly. It's more of a, from what you were able to gather, it just looks random. There doesn't seem to be any sort of pattern. It just looks like you, you found some, you know, obviously some small breakages and slashes around town, but it looks like something's just trying to break in, and it, if it breaks in, it does. Okay. Um. So wait, is it so? It's getting to the time where we see the sighting. So that means if we follow this blood trail, that thing, wherever it's staying, it, it's probably not going to be there, and it's probably going to come here. So actually, you're right. Yeah, like that's the, it takes someone away from the town, not it coming towards. Mm. So yeah, okay. I, I still, th I still think we should kind of do some recon before we jump into searching for this thing. I mean, we know it's coming back to this town every night. We I don't really know if think it's every we should night. try to. Yeah. You just know it Isn't came that last what night. No, it, it's happened many times throughout the last couple months. So, what I would say is this: if it is a beast and it is attacking people, we can safely assume that it's also, seeing as no bodies have been found, it's also eating them. Um, and considering there was an attack last night, I think the beast would be, for lack of a better word, fed. Um, so it won't be attacking tonight. It wouldn't have a need to, unless mm -mm. it was just part of the street. That's what I was thinking, that's too. So it, just maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to follow the blood trail. Maybe that's where he's currently resting. Maybe that's where he's, like, for lack of a better word, hibernating. Until yeah, because he's, he's, maybe it's he's injured. Do we know it's injured? Let's yeah, you don't know if it's injured. Well, I would assume it's injured because of the blood trail, unless it was just dragging the body out the window. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, it was. Okay. Well, I thought end. it was blood from it being injured. Well, it might be injured, because if it went through the window, it might have had some cuts on it. We don't know. Yeah. It's probably from so, the body. I would assume, seeing as there was so much blood in that room, I would guess. It's probably from the body that was taken out of it. <laughs> yeah. We don't, know. We, don't know. We, don't, we don't know yet, so... Yeah, I think the best thing for us to do is to follow it and hope we find it asleep and can plan around there and go from there. Yeah, but what about right. um, Arthur? I know he's unreliable, but he could still well, have now, some... He, we've already been told he's an old man, and considering it's like nine o'clock-ish now, I'm guessing he'd be asleep uh, and would be no use whatsoever. Um, and we don't want it to get too late and we're out. So, I, I, I don't know, it's up to you guys. I'd rather go now and talk to Arthur in the morning. Um, what do you guys yeah. reckon? If we're not dead. If we're not dead. Follow, <laughs> I say we follow the blood trail. Somehow. Okay, let's go in. <laughs> okay then, so I guess we're following the blood trail then. Okay. Um, <laughs> you start following the trail. Um, it leads directly deep into the Holly Forest. Do you keep uh, going into the forest? Yeah, um, I'm gonna uh, roll a stealth. Yeah, I wanna kinda go in a little bit sneakily as well. I don't wanna go in straight All right. away. All right. Go ahead and roll stealth. I'll be I'll be walking behind everybody too, because I I'm pretty yeah. not, not stealthy. Sneaky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Luce, you you stealth fine. I am tromping through this forest. Yep, you, forest you like are stepping on every loose branch. You are crunching all the foliage underneath you. You, all the all the trees sticking out are smacking you right in your me metal uh, plated armor. You are not quiet at all. You, you pretty much give a a minus to Lucius stealth roll now. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> no, because he's plenty in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'm going to roll for, I would like to run an active perception as well. Okay. Because um, I'm looking for 
Everyone's not bad, actually. Yeah, everyone else's stealth is just fine. Uh, Rogue <laughs> exactly why I'm way behind making everybody. lots of noise. Try a barbarian day. <laughs> if anything, he's gaining attention of anything that's nearby. <laughs> well, technically, that would increase our stealth because they'd be focused on him. They wouldn't be looking yes. around. Possibly. Uh, I planned it that um, way. He's covering the party, you see. We like that. <laughs> We're gonna dress you up and and drag and do the hula. Uh, yeah, we're gonna pick you in the, the brightest colored outfit we can find. As as you are traveling in, uh, the, the Holly Forest is a dense and overgrown with underbrush and tall spruce trees. Uh, the woods are they're they're strangely quiet. Uh, thick gray clouds roll over the moon, um, blocking out all light occasionally. After a few hours of walking, uh, the trees are all starting to look the same. Uh, you guys are a uh, confusion starts to set in a little bit, and you feel like you're walking in cir- some uh, walking in circles. Uh, something feels wrong. Can I roll survival to, or yeah. well, you were, I think you... it'd be survival to know my, um, to be able to know my way. Uh, sure. Um, I will. Oh. You do, you do have an active perception up already. Also, can yeah. I ask? Go ahead. Survival is different. Survival I is different. I was going to go ahead, but Luce, you saying something. Can I use um, an ability when not in combat, like my dark vision, for example, to see oh, if there's course. anything? Dark vision is just okay. a natural thing. You you could just see okay. in the dark at all yeah, times. Um, dark vision my dark all vision. the time. Yep. Um, would I be able to you do anything with my? Because I've got an inspiration point from like two sessions ago, which I still haven't used. Mm-hmm. Would I be able to use that with my dark vision at all to see if there's anything that is like one hundred percent the same, not just well, looks it, the same, but one hundred percent? Dark vision isn't a skill. You use your inspiration point. It's on like a skill. You just get dark vision because you're an elf. So you could use your inspiration if you wanted to get like advantage on um, your perception check. But I was just about to, because Rokax already has an active perception check going. So I would say you okay. don't need to necessarily roll it. Right. Rokax, it however, uh, since he's <clears throat> had his active perception and looking around, um, as you're trying to collect your surroundings and uh, see what is going on here, uh, you see a dark flash of movement beyond trees uh, behind you, about 60 feet away. Behind me? Yep. So, okay, so it's plenty behind everybody else. Um, I'm going to... Well, I'm obviously going to yell out, um, not not in a manner that uh, lords... You know, I'm going to scream out to indicate that there's something there, but so that... You know, but not to let it know that I'm actually yelling to the party or whatever. Um, so I'll just I'll, I'll yell out, um, "Who's who's there behind me?" Something like that. Okay. And don my shield. I will don my shield right now. Okay. Um. Nothing. Uh, there, there's a. Oh, we should have. We should have sound. Hold on. Let me let me get a, a forest <laughs> sound thing going on. Please don't. I do have do a forest. You really need... Hmm. I kind of feel like we should be kind of grouped up a little bit so it can't pick us off. Well, considering I'm already in like a really good like stealth sort of thing, I'm going to stay stealth like behind trees. Um, but I will be heading towards you. I'm just gonna keep myself stealth so I can get like a nice surprise attack, etc. Okay. Um, before this happens, do you guys want to take a quick break? Because I, yes, have to pee. Yes. Yep. I need to toilet. I need to pee. I need all sorts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My cat wants to climb over everything. <laughs> all right. Let, let's let's take a quick fiver, and uh, we'll we'll Much love convene. To the <laughs> <laughs> Be right back, my friends. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. I just changed the sound because it makes a little more sense to have nighttime forest sounds. Okay. Um, Rokax noticed the flash behind him. He alerts you guys that something's out there. Um, you don't notice anything else? 
uh, for a few minutes. Um, do you guys continue walking forward, or do you hunker down? What are you doing? Well, I'm still stealthed um, behind a tree, so I'm going to follow whatever the rest of the party does. Rokex noticed something yep. in the forest. Lucio. Oh, Lucio. Um... No, Rokex. Rokex. Our... no, it was Rokex. No, it was... Our distraction. I heard. Yep. Um, so it, it doesn't, I mean, we didn't see anything for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But obviously knows we're here. Do we still have a trail to follow? Yes. Okay, carry on with the trail then, I guess. But um, whoever's at the back, uh, stay weary of um, behind. So who's at the back? Is it me? Okay. I've no. got nine. He's okay. the furthest behind because he's think, not stealthy. I think, I'm, I think I'm the furthest ahead, right? Yep. Yeah. Considering, yeah, I've got the highest stealth. Uh-uh. Okay, cool. I think it's more towards the middle. And I'll go behind Pancog because I've got night vision and I can see past um, and yeah, behind it Rokax if he needs. Okay. I'm pretty sure every one of us have dark yeah, vision. I'm guessing Just Corrin, gonna I think that we out. all do, yeah, do we? Cool. One yeah. of you every, Everybody has dark vision. One of you doesn't, I don't remember who yeah. it is. I think it's, no, I think Corrin does. Hold on, we can, we can figure this out real quick. Yep, party sheet. Uh, Corrin yeah. is the only one that doesn't. Yep. Uh, Actually, Rokax, you don't even have dark vision. I think that's I have dark vision. Spell what are you talking about? No, you don't. Lies. Dirty lies. <laughs> you are the dirty <laughs> liar, my friend. Goliaths wouldn't have dark vision. Yeah, I'll just say yeah. that. Hang on a minute. Um, yeah, yeah, they would. Nope. Hang on. If you can justify it, I say let him do it. Go on. Justify it. How would they have it? <laughs> Well, we he live in we live in mountains me. and caves and stuff, <laughs> so it, it makes natural that we or, or it makes sense that we naturally are able to see in the dark. Yeah, but That's wouldn't why. your caves be lit up by torches? That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, only the, only not. the truly what? magical races in D and D seem to have dark vision. It's upsetting. Oh no! Like uh, uh, dwarves have dark vision too. They're not Do magical. They? I didn't know <clears> dwarves yeah. did. Oh. Most most yeah. things that live underground, but Goliaths are, don't have are it. in the ground. <laughs> look, yeah, look at your sheet. You don't have it. Look, yeah, look whatever. at whatever. Look at races. So whatever. Whatever. I'm, I'm my, not gonna fall. My character you guys. sheet lies. Yep. Um, let's see. It's not. Okay. Um, so you guys are kind of. Uh, you keep walking forward. Uh, you travel for a few more minutes, and. Uh, Oops, my thing is closed. There you go. You're traveling for a few, few, few more minutes, and then suddenly you hear a, a sound of branch crack, cracking underfoot. Uh, out of the corner of your eye, Rokax, uh, about 30 feet back, you spot him. Bathed in moonlight is a man that's following you. He's brandishing a knife that glints radiantly. And as you take notice of him, he gets down on all fours, and he breaks into a sprint. Roll for initiative. <clears throat> oh, I didn't see that yet. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Why would he need weird. a knife if he's, he can he's go He's charging on... you. The intimidation factor? I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you, but a guy on all fours sprinting at me with a knife in his hand would terrify the hell out of me, dude. So, well, how do you, I guess, how are you guys this reacting? Is, this is a horror film. Why? Well, I, I mean, well, I, obviously, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm still. I'm still, I'm still never going a werewolf to I'm, have a knife and just turn into a wolf and then just come at you. I'm totally gonna die. Yeah, okay. I'm, I mean, I'm ready for combat at this point. You guys gonna roll up? I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. I'm. Like I said, I'm still stealthed up, so I'm ready this for would, combat. This, would, Go be roll the, this issue. would be the time to. um... This would be the time to play the Shia LaBeouf song. <laughs> <laughs> as well as releasing VC. Uh, right, so, we got this. We're gonna smash it. What? All right. So yeah, you guys can roll initiative if you want. <clears throat> if we want, can't. Well, what I if mean, I just want to go first? 
What if I just want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's rough. Well, don't you get a you get a bonus because you're shield, right? Yes, I do. Is that you get I advantage get or do you advantage. get advantage? Go ahead and roll again then. I think I get advantage. There you go. Yes, 16. thank you. Okay, uh, Echo and Corin, you guys get, roll an advantage or initiative. All right. He's following you. Echo, on the main page, the thing where it's AC, in it, and speed in the middle, the one in the middle is what you want to drag in. There you go. Nice roll, hey. damn. Hey, nice. Okay. Uh, as you, uh, you guys, you guys prep uh, for uh, this assault that's obviously uh, coming towards you, it, he's moving unbelievably quickly towards you. Um, as he gets closer, you can see he's, he's just covered in blood, has a wild look in his eyes. Um, and as he's almost upon you, uh, the clouds billow over the moon, completely blocking out the moonlight. Um, roll a perception check, all of you. Perception or perception? Survival. Mm. Oh, Should have used God. my inspiration on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. My thing's closed. There it goes. I want this. Okay, so let's see. We got a 6, a 20, an 8, a 16. We're missing... Echo. Echo. We need your perception. Actually, no, we don't. We got. We already got a couple people that uh, are able to see it already. Um, Echo, can you hear us? I don't think she can hear us at the moment. Hang on, we're going to see what's going yeah, on. She might be locked. <sighs> All right, go ahead. Um, Let's see. Uh, core, sorry, Pancog and Rokax, um, you are able to hear a little bit of, um, because the, the cloud, or the clouds have covered the moon now, and it's completely pitch black, uh, you hear panting and soft footprints, or footprints, footsteps nearby. They are going away from you. Eventually, the sounds disappear. And the woods are completely uh, dark now. I didn't have an opportunity to react to that. No, he didn't. He didn't get close enough. Um. Okay. Um. Now it's dark. And you seem to have lost him. But you're completely lost yourself. Uh, creeping quietly through the underbrush, you see a small cottage in the distance. And uh, the light is on. We should probably wait till cereal shows up. We open the door Sorry, and see Shia LaBeouf. Sorry, my ear needs to run out of battery at the exact wrong time. It doesn't oh, no. even warn you. It doesn't really warn you. It's just like, battery, gone. That sucks. Phew. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> okay, we'll, 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 we'll catch you back up, Serial. So, um... Let's see. Uh, so the, the clouds bill over the moon. It gets completely dark. Um, and then, uh... Rokax and uh, Pancog were able to hear some panting, and uh, footsteps ended up leaving. They like they went the away, and they kind of faded in the distance. Okay. Um, now it's dark. So wait, I want to go ahead. I want to track them. I don't want to. I don't want to keep moving in another direction. I want to track those footsteps. It is pitch blackout, and you don't have dark vision. You have a torch. Yeah, but I can stop. I can, yeah, I have, I have torches, and I can, uh, you can see a certain distance still. Yeah, w but without dark vision, you only can see like ten feet. What's that? You, without dark vision, you only can see like ten feet <clears throat> with, when it's uh, pitch black. We'll take out a lantern then. <laughs> take yeah, out a lantern. Say, light a torch or something if you, if you need. I have torches. Okay, uh, so you light a torch. Um, you're gonna you're gonna continue trying to follow, uh, or try to find some tracks and follow them. I feel like that's what we should do. 
Okay. Yeah. I don't know about everybody else. I feel like we should Stay wary. to track this thing. Okay. Um, you go ahead and uh, roll survival to see, see if you can uh, track them well. Ouch. Oh, God. Nope. Apparently, okay. I can't. Uh, Rokax, Rokax finds the, the tracks uh, fine and kind of waves you guys over saying he found them. Um, but the, the forest is very dense and thick and you guys kind of got turned to well around a little bit. Something affected your uh, your perception of the forest as you walk deeper and deeper into it. Um, Can we make an arcana see if there's any lingering magic? Sure. Seems like that shouldn't happen. Did you say sure? Yeah. <clears throat> nice roll. Um, there's no lingering magic um, that you guys are that you can detect in uh, the area. Um, let's see. Uh, you guys continue following. The tracks, well, that means, uh, Rokax, you have to be leading then if you're following the tracks, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so does your guys' party formation change at all if he, since he's in the front? Um, I'll, um, keep going. So I'm still going to remain stealth, though. I'm not going to break my stealth. I'm not going to make myself known. Um, I'm going to be bobbing, weaving in between trees. Um, still trying to keep up. Trying to dodge trees. All right. <laughs> Okay. Um, you guys are uh, walking through. Rokax, roll a deck save. Oh, that's the worst for me. Wait, all of us roll a deck save? No, just Rokax. Oh, oh. I'm just like, wrong one. Okay. No, 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 sorry. Oh. It's the same thing. It's the yep. same thing. Okay. Um, your leg gets caught in a bear trap. Damn. Oh. Uh, you take... We found a bad trap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we found one. Yo, you're gonna take... We haven't set any of the other bear traps, have we? You take four damage. All right, four damage. Mm -hmm. Hang on, seeing, seeing as we, we had the drawing of where the bear traps were, wouldn't he have had like some sort of advantage on seeing it? Oh yeah, so... you can roll advantage. I have. Yeah, I was gonna say. So that you don't take the damage, like because yeah. you would have known where they were roughly because of the drawing. See, look, I got that's you. That's also <laughs> based. I thought that, ahead, that, dude. That's Thank also you. basing on uh, <laughs> the guy said he's terrible at drawing too. So. Oh, you got a point. Yeah, but it really yeah, already said your, you can roll. So. It really depends on your perception <laughs> of his map and how useful it is. You, yeah, you still fail. Yeah, uh, and the worst. Uh, I tried, my dude. I'm sorry. Map. Um, you can roll a. And athletics checks if you want to try to pry it open. Well, could um, I do oh, that? I'm, have I'm, I'm, oh, I'm athletics, so I'm acrobatic. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be I, got, I got plenty of strength. I'll be able to get it open and off. Oh, don't. If you crit fail this, you're going to snap it back onto your foot, dude. <laughs> I've got a, dude, I've got a plus six, though. So. Okay. I even have to Dude, worry you, about you it. You barely make it. <laughs> yeah, you were able. To, you were able to just grit back the pain and just. Um, your what leg you is talking like, about barely making it. It's a bear <laughs> trap. That, yeah, that's a big ass any, trap. Any fool, yeah, any any fool can open a bear trap. That's a that's a ten save. Yeah, Come but on. you're in pain. Yeah, whatever. I'm with um, a shock factor of it just happening. Yeah, well. so, <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay, so uh, you, you are able to uh, actually no. Bear traps are difficult to open because otherwise a bear would be able to open it itself. So, but. <laughs> uh, bears, bears aren't smart. They don't know how they operate. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, anyway, so I got out. it open. Now you guys right? are obviously yeah. trying to stay aware of this map is not the most reliable. Um, <laughs> you're kind of checking near the ground around you. Uh, you. No, so you continue to to follow the tracks, um, and it's they're definitely headed towards this lit up cottage in the distance. Uh, you creep okay. silently through the underbrush towards the cottage. Uh, from the doorstep, you see a man sitting inside. He's turned away from you. He's sharpening an axe. <laughs> sharpening an axe. 
That's not oh, creepy at all. Okay, this also is not good. <laughs> but, um, hey. Okay. Just a quick question. Um, the fork. B before we go, um, how bad is um, Rokex's leg at this point? Is it like limping? Is it like a graze or. He'll just, just get like, 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 like minus only twos just on. Happened. Yeah, he'll get some minus just twos or something on some, a certain checks. Okay. Why okay. is that? Because um, I don't know if, we, if anyone had a bandage or something. Oh, no, so that, yeah, you, know, you actually that do that. That's what I'd say. He's like, bandage it yeah, up. So, yeah, bandage it up real quick before we go and see the man with the fucking <laughs> hat. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if someone could heal his leg real quick, at least then you haven't got any movement, like, you know. You can roll survival if you want to yeah. bandage up real Uh, it's medicine, I think. Or, yeah, medicine. Actually, someone oh, can roll oh, medicine Pancom, if they want. Yeah, can cast cure wounds. Does that count? That oh, counts as a that's a spell though. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. It's only four damage. It's not worth it. But you can take the time to do a medicine to bandage it if you want. Medicine. I will plus two. That might work. Yeah, that, that would that would be great. But um, hey, Rafer. Yes. The... Hey, there that's you go. Cool. Medicine, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Corin coming out of it. Like, gee, I got hold on. Yeah, I can't, hold on, I can't <laughs> hear Pancock. That's a damn good bandage. Yeah, you... say, my favorite trick is forced, and we're in a forest, correct? Yes. I'm going to say you, you got healed fully. Um, Just to double check, you, it says even when you're engaged in another activity while traveling, you remain alert to danger. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. Um, well, that's good. So you should go ahead in the future in case there's any bear traps. My favorite terrain is. In case there's any bear traps. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, do I sense? It would make the most sense. Well, you no, know, I'm really glad her cat's not here right now because this would be a bad <laughs> situation. I think, <laughs> really I, think uh, bad I don't think that would apply to bear traps, uh, Pancog, yeah, because you, you're alert of danger of like animals or roots or something i don't think a living person, things a person place thing you'd be aware of because it doesn't give off anything does it yeah so yeah um but, uh, anyways, yeah. so you guys you guys are you see in the distance this cottage what do you do um i definitely think we should approach yeah. Um, how, have we have we ever seen this man before on our travels at all? Is he anyone that we recognize or remotely resemble anyone that we know or have heard of recently? Uh, right now you're too far away, and he's also facing okay. the opposite way of you. Oh yeah, yeah, true, true, true. I just think that if we heard of someone living in the woods, like you know, a lumberjack or something that we might have heard about earlier. Um, okay, well then I would suggest that we move up um, slowly. Um, trying to prove that we're not a threat, we're not rushing towards him like that dude in the forest. Oh, <laughs> um, you just got all muddy. You're breaking up, dude. Me? Yeah, your mic got all muddied for a minute. Say again? Ooh. Um, I was saying we should probably head towards him, um, slowly, as if to not be a threat like the guy in the woods was. Um... But from this distance, considering that um, like we have dark vision um, and we can see up to like sixty feet, are we further than sixty feet? Yeah. I mean, okay. You you can um, plainly see inside the cottage because it's lit up inside. Okay. Well, seeing as he's outside, he's, I'm guessing he's got a little bit of light on him. Can we see any sort of blood on him? He's where in we the are. cottage. Yeah, he's in the cottage. Okay, well, right, right, so from what we can see on his back, like if there's light there, is there any sort of blood on his body whatsoever? Yeah, should we do any? Like, can we? Like, can we? Like, well, as we're moving forward, as we're like heading up towards it, can we see if like, he's got any blood on him at all? Uh, yes. Because there's no way a guy in the woods he has got blood on him. Uh huh. Uh, as, is you, it as, as much you, blood as, you are as the guy in the forward, forward has. You notice that uh, the cottage is very simple. Um, it has a single armchair, and there's a fireplace, which is actually casting off. Uh, actually, no, you don't. You don't know the blood. Um, there's a fireplace in front of him, so he's actually silhouetted. So you can't tell if there's any blood or anything. Oh, okay. Okay. Um... Hey. Well, I think the only thing we can really do is head up towards the cottage. And yeah. 
We Say what's pro- up. <laughs> we should probably, like, stealth him just in case, like, he turns out to actually be, you know, a murderer or something. I rolled, I rolled a um, stealth it check is, to stealth it. up to the um, cabin to then be able to use my ring of jumping to get onto the roof really quickly and kind of hide up there out of sure. the way whilst the others talk to him. So let me roll a stealth. Um, I'll, I'll, you, can keep your, you can keep your stealth roll if you want. Oh well, yeah. You want, I'll you keep, want to keep your stealth roll? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll just, I'll just do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I'll go hide on the roof. <laughs> so you sneak up. Um, what does the rest of the party do? I, I want to use uh, prime, prime ball awareness to okay. see if there's anything else in the within a one mile radius of here. Uh, anything else like uh, creatures? Yes. Um. um as for one minute per level of the spell slot you expend, and you can sense whether the following type of creatures are present within one mile of you. Uh, aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Uh, you detect none of those. The creature's location or number, but it does tell me if there's stuff around. Uh, no, the, uh, you, do, you detect none of those kinds of creatures in a mile. Uh, make sure you use your spell slot for that. We've lost road packs for a little bit, by the way. Yeah, I see that. How do I? Headset. Okay. Uh, here. I'll... Uh, I don't know how to do that. I will get it. It's um, above in your spells. You have to check off as in you cast the spell. Oh, okay. Got it. Got okay, it. so whilst I'm on the roof, I kind of nod towards the others to say, like, I'm ready if you want to knock on the door. Um, so I give them a little nod to let them know I'm, I'm prepared. Um, and my daggers, I've got my hands on my daggers, ready to draw them just in case. I'm back. Oh, nice. Welcome back. Hey. Um, I want to roll perception on whether this is a good idea or not, because I don't think I should not. I don't think it's safe. Oh. Um... So, how far is everyone from the entrance of the this cabin? Because there's no door, and uh, you just um, you can kind of see inside it. Wait, how did he get in the, if there's no door? Uh, there's, there's no door. There's you no, could walk right in. Right. <laughs> oh, I <I'm probably laughs> like no door. Oh, wow. I was like. Hang on. I said it, the, okay, the door no. just doesn't exist there. Uh, that's a dumb moment. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I, I want to stealthily move around to a good vantage point uh, with my arrow already knocked into my bow. Okay. Or not in my bow. Is that a stealth check for? Whoa. My computer is having a problem. Yeah, you'll um you can use your previous stealth check if you want, or you can re-roll it. Yeah, well, let me let my me fantasy use, grounds uh, just locked up. Hopefully it comes yeah, back. Yeah, I'm not seeing rolls. It, it locked ours up too. Oh, there you go, your stealth roll came up. I'm gonna do the previous check. Uh you're gonna keep your previous? Alright. Um that's fine. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so um is anyone getting... Well, I guess, Lucio, you're the closest. Are you actually, like, looking inside to see anything, or...? Well, like, I'm, I, I'm on the roof at this point. Um, so, seeing as there's no door, I guess I could, like, peer down and kind of have a look and see if I can see anything. So, do I roll perception to see if I can see from that angle, or...? Oh, yeah. Or is it acrobatics because of how I'm doing it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. Perception. Here we go. Nice. Nice roll. Um. Yeah. You, you, obviously, you see uh this figure, um, in the the distance, kind of closer to the fireplace, sharpening an axe. Um. You do notice there is a. Oh crap! I don't even call it. It's not a gate, but like a, a thing that flips up from the floor. It's uh. There, there's obviously a basement downstairs. Um. That Pretty you can see. Door. Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily a trap. It's made and obviously in sight, but uh, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It just you flip up so you can go downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of things. 
Um, but yeah, so that's what uh, you see inside. Okay. Holy crap. Um, Trying to open Is up. anyone close enough for me to relay that information to? That there's a... Uh... Where's... Okay, what information so a, would you like to try door. to relay is the first question. The, that I see that he's currently not looking, and okay. there's a trap door. Um, there's a door, a door that leads to somewhere underground, and I think that would be a point of interest for us to look. Or maybe for um, us to wait until he goes down there, because you said he was playing with it anyway, so he's probably going to go down the steps. Maybe that'll be the time to go in and confront him down there so he can't really escape. I'm guessing there'll be no escape from down there, but we don't know yet. Yeah. Well, we're all going to be looking in that direction, so you could yeah, just... Yeah, no, it depends on who's, to... who's close enough and whether or not he'll hear me. Um, yeah, but you, you could just beckon us over. You yeah, but how would I, that's what I'm asking. How would I do that? How would I relay that information without... <laughs> you have you to know, come up with that. That's, that's and... going to be difficult yeah, to try to do. Um... um there it goes. Okay, Jeez. so hang on. Pancock, Pancock said that she was making her way around, right, into like a position to be a bit stealthy and all that. Um, is Pancock the closest to me then, in that case? Because uh, sure. we might have a game of Chinese whispers here, guys. <laughs> so I kind of um, like wave over Pancock and I kind of do the outline of a door. And opening and down. Um, <laughs> the kind of to say there's a door, it opens up, and we go down it. So, can I? Does she roll to see <laughs> yeah. how she perceives yeah. it, or do yeah. I roll to gonna, see how? Okay, so. You're gonna both have uh, to roll. You're gonna have to roll a. Uh, this is a, a shot in the dark. You're, dude. you're, you're gonna <laughs> roll. <laughs> Lucy, you will roll performance. And oh, no. <laughs> Pancog, you're gonna have to roll okay. perception. <laughs> okay, this would be good. Uh, oh, you actually performed uh, quite well. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I fall off the roof. <laughs> I, I was, I was just gonna say, she sees that and she thinks that you look like you're slipping off the roof. She can't tell that you're actually trying to give her a signal at all. She just thinks that like you're slipping and you're catching yourself. Uh, but do I actually fall off the roof? No. I won't make that happen. Okay, okay, at least, at least, thank you. Okay, so because I think that he's about to fall off, can I make an acrobatics or athletics check to also climb up onto the roof to help our freaking rogue, if you're not rogue, just play? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you're, you're kind of far away from him. Uh, so you would have to, like, break yourself to run over to him. Uh, actually, I don't, as my favorite terrain is forced. Mm -hmm. I can move stealthily by myself uh, at a natural pace. Right. But if you run to towards him, that's not your natural pace. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Can I casually walk over to him and then make my way onto the roof? If Yeah, you, you can, but coming. you'll get there after he looks like he hasn't fallen. Right, I'm so, okay with that. Okay. <laughs> sure, that works. <laughs> right, I'm stealthily uh, making myself up to the peripheral of the building as it goes to try and see what he looks like from the front, see if I can get to a front window stealthily. Uh, he's facing a solid wall. Of, uh, like, there's a fireplace directly in front of him. And you can't so tell are we afraid of in... Do I try are we afraid of encountering this you. guy? That's up to you guys. Cool. Is he is he still holding the axe? Oh, yeah, he's he's sharpening it. Okay, I, I, I think seeing as Rokax is the big boy of the group, um, I reckon um, you should the rest of us should stay a little bit hidden and you should see okay. whether or not because if he thinks it's a one-on-one -on -one fight he might let his guard down and show his true nature 
Um, if he sees a yeah. lot of us, he might try and trick us into something, and it might be detrimental to the party. So, oh, you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, he might be, he might okay, be innocent my... and sharpening his his axe to um to for the beast himself. Mm. Mm, you know. So yeah, so maybe it's nice to... if Frontex goes alone, and if yeah. everything seems okay, we can uh, one by one just like I can fall off the roof and just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find a bush nearby uh, to hide behind near the door. Okay. Uh, you guys are just kind of. Uh, we... Go ahead. Are you guys all in position? Because I'm about ready to walk up and call yeah, out. Yeah, me and Pancog are on the roof. Wait, where's Corin? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm trying. No, stop it. I'm trying my um best to like kind of like stealth um or keep like at least hidden basically from him because I think that he's bad news and I have a feeling he may try to attack us or something I don't know Okay well yeah I think we're all in position then Yeah okay so everybody stealth um I'll, uh, I'm gonna make my way to about, um, 30, uh, I'm gonna go about 30 feet in front of the, uh, door, and I'm gonna call out, uh, uh, trying not to be menacing, um, but try to make him think that I'm just, uh, somebody who's lost in the woods looking for, uh, looking for shelter, but I do have my shield on. Okay. Um. So I'll call out and I'll go, uh, uh, hello there, um, I come in peace. Uh, okay. Oops. God damn it. I didn't mean, I always push that button. Okay, um, as soon as you, uh, make any sort of, uh, sound, he jumps up, turns, and charges you. Uh, so uh, yeah, 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 cool. I will just keep your guys' initiatives rolls that you did, and uh, combat is ensuing. I don't have a map uh, open for this fight, but it's a freaking close encounter, so it doesn't really matter. If that's cool with you guys. Me and Hancock are still all four of us are still stealth. So, so yeah. I see the the dude. <clears throat> Yeah, he, he definitely charges you. Um, okay, so... I figured that. that first, first up is Echo. Your mic, babe. Yeah, um, the best I can do is... Do, 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 do. I can't really do much because I'm hiding behind a bush and I can't do many uh, actions because that is my action. And well, you can move out from behind the bush and look inside the the window or whatever it is. Um, yeah. Um, Don't you have ranged attacks? Yep. Uh, You're definitely within range. Okay. Um, let me just check something. I could get him with a bit of a blast but that might be just over the top um and i'll strike crossbow um yeah i'm gonna go look in the window oops yes yeah i'm gonna look in the Dude, window dude's attacking us he's charging us he's yeah. charging me oh yeah we are in combat really. sorry um Marilyn came in halfway through, um, so yeah, sorry. Um, so he's attacking you. Where am I? I'm little in the bush. I'm going to go for the Eldritch Blast. All right. Okay, uh, so I'm going to unstealth, come out from the bush, like, hello, and then um, I'm going to hit them with an Eldritch Blast. Oh, so... uh, since you guys don't have markers, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to drag it into the dice tower on uh, Fantasy Grounds. Okay. 
Do, do, do. So we don't get to know what we what we roll. Uh, I think you guys get to know what you roll. You not? Not when you oh, roll yeah, it you into don't. the Sorry. dice tower. Yeah, uh, roll it normally into chat, and I just tell you if you hit. Eldritch Blast. Uh, come on. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, you need to roll the damage. Grab the dice and drag it into chat. Where is it? In oh my god, where? You should have, like, which yeah, thing that's it where is, I am. and then drag it in. Yep. Yep, I got it, but the dice isn't there today. Uh, so, you, at the bottom, where it says, uh, <clears throat> or the, uh, you need to click on that little magnifying glass next to Eldritch Blast, and it'll show it to you. Oh, I got you. Oh. There you go. And then drag uh, the attack. Okay, got you. I'm so sorry if you're having to hear stuff from my mic. My kitten loves my mic for some reason. No problem. She wants to paw at it every chance she gets. There you go. You hit. So go ahead and uh, grab the damage and throw it into chat. Uh, not that one. That was not the right one. Yeah, the damage one. God damn it! Why did it roll? It? Oh, because it added additional damage. Um, so you did six damage. Okay, so you, uh, you do six damage to him. Explodes, and uh, he's kind of surprised from it because he didn't expect a, you know, a, a dark sphere of smoke come blasting at his face. But he is directly charging Rokak still. Next. Sorry, bro. Ro um, okay. Rokak is up. Uh, is he within range? Uh, no. Melee range? No. -uh. But or he, you could get to him. He's like. 10 feet away, 10, 15 feet away from you. Okay. I'll go ahead and uh, move to him, and I will swing. Um, so I, I'm going to swing, but I'm going to use uh, maneuvering attack. Okay. All right, that's when I hit, so hold on. I gotta make sure I hit first. So, here's my attack. Uh, you hit. Okay, I'm gonna use maneuvering attack. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, um, have Lushu, um... So, uh, I allow a creature that can see or hear me to use its reaction to move up to half its speed without provoking opportunity attacks from the target of your attack. So, oh, that's cool. um, you can move half your speed towards the dude. Lushu. Okay, and, um, and, I, and I still won't be seen. No, you, you, you will, because you're walking straight through the door. Oh, but okay. you can, it's essentially a free action to get within range to attack him on your turn. Okay. Exactly. You, uh, don't, you don't have to move. That's cool. Nice one. Um, and then... Do the damage. So I roll damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I was looking for... I don't have anything for superiority superiority dice. So I'll just roll a d8. Okay. So 11 damage. I'm going to use action, action surge to go ahead and swing again at him. Okay. So you did 11 so far? Yeah. Okay. I probably miss with that one, huh? Uh, with your attack? Yeah, that's a miss. Okay. My turn's over. Alright. It is a mysterious figure's attack. He... Wide-eyed, wild, and just goes into a howling roar as he comes and attacks you. <laughs> Apparently I, I mistyped something. It says Molto. Molto attack! He is going to... Um... 
Let's see. Um. Oh no, I'm forgetting. Oh, there you go. Uh, he's going to bite you, uh, Rokax. Let's see if it just hits you. Uh, that is a miss. And he's also going to hit you with his axe. Uh, this one. How much is your fucking armor? I don't think he hits you either time, because your, ar your armor boy, yeah. Uh, he misses both times. Let's see. Uh, oh, I forgot he had this. Okay, next person is, uh, Corin. I got an idea. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of funny. Um, I actually kind of want to use heat metal, just so he'll let go of the, uh... Well, his, his, his axe part that he holds on to is wood. Oh, dang. I mean, you can heat the front of it, but it might actually okay. hurt your party members if they come into contact with it when he swings Darn. it at them. Okay. That sucks. Um, okay. Because I wanted to shapeshift, <laughs> and that's why I was trying to do that, but I don't want to do it while he's, like, swinging around an axe. Um, it's not, so, just so you know, if if he's by me, he gets disadvantage on attack rolls if he doesn't, if he's not attacking me. Right. So even if you do shape shift, and he does try to attack you, pretty low chance that he's gonna hit you. Okay. Um. I actually, Kitty, stop. I actually want to try to maybe turn into a wolf. Sure. Uh, I will have to bring NPC. Wolf. Yay. Uh, you become just a normal wolf, right? Yep. All right, we'll drag. Or actually, I'll just open it. <clears throat> And now I have your stats, so I can see them. Okay, um, and that takes your action to transform, right? Or is that a bonus action for you? I know it's a bonus action for moon druids. It's wild shape. It doesn't say... I don't think it is. You can use your action, action to magically assume the shape of a beast, so that takes your turn. <sighs> okay. But you're a wolf fun. now? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can run up to get within range if you want, because uh, you haven't moved yet. Uh, I will, yeah, I'll run up, um, but I'm not going to run up, like, too close, just because, you know, I, I don't know, because he has that axe, and I'm just like, um, so I'll run up, yeah, a little near him. Are, are you, are you within attack range of him, or no? Um, yeah, I'll run up with attack range. Okay. Um, he's, he's kind of surrounded by you guys now. Lucia's okay. turn! Yay! Alright then, so... I'm... I uh, get right behind him. Um... And I use my first dagger. That's got a hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. Awesome. And the damage... Not bad. And the second dagger I can roll now, right? But it gets the uh, plus four modifier doesn't happen to the damage, does it? It's just correct. one d four. That's it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So second dagger, nice. Uh, um, holy and shit! You rolled a crit. I don't know. Oh, very nice. Wait a minute. I don't know. No, you didn't. Sorry. No, that's not a natural crit. Yeah. No. Um, I don't know how to roll it without the plus four piercing, so I'm just gonna roll a d four. Um, and we'll do that damage. Okay. Three, there you go. Uh, so you, nine damage. Nine damage, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's and see. can I take my bonus action and um, jump back to disengage? Uh, you're, uh, I don't think disengage is a bonus action. Oh wait, not. can you do that as a rogue? I forget. It's like cunning action or something? 
Uh, abilities. Uh, what is your cunning have, action? Oh, cunning action. The cunning action is a feature, You yeah. can take a bonus action on turns in combat. You can use it to dash, disengage, or hide. Yes, so you can use it to disengage. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'll use it. Yeah, I'll use it to disengage, yeah. Okay. Uh, you bounce back 10 feet away from him so he can't hit you. Mm-hmm. Pen cog! Awesome. Then I'll end my turn. Uh, uh, no, uh, well, actually, you have that sharpshooter ability now, don't you? I so, do, and it ignores, um... Yep, it ignores cover. So, normally, you would get a disadvantage roll because, uh, Rokex is in your way, but since you took that awesome feat, you can shoot right around Rokex and still hit him. If you crit, miss, and hit me in my ass, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> uh, she hits. Okay, so I also have a question. Huh? Since I have braces for surgery. You, you hit, you hit even with your sharpshooter. Oh, you just did so much fucking damage. I, that's what I'm asking. Holy with shit. My oh my god, you guys, I don't know if you guys can see it, but she just did 20 damage. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, that's, that's oh, huge. That feat is disgusting. <laughs> Holy shit. Nice hit. So, no, hold on. I, I just want to make sure. Because I don't think it included my bracers of archery. It does. It? I have it included. That's, okay, cool. Because I was like, wait, there's plus two? Yeah, because you. So, oh, normally it would be plus 10 from your sharpshooter, right? But then you get your plus two from your bracers, and then you get your plus two from your dex bonus. Okay. Is that on damage or attack? That was her. Uh, her attack, she takes a minus five. And if she hits, then she gets a plus ten. On damage. Yeah. On damage. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, there's a couple There's a couple oh, beats damn. like that that are just disgusting. It's essentially power attack from 3.5. I already get plus two uh, for damage. For uh -huh. damage. Yeah, she just did 20 damage. That, <laughs> you just doubled the amount of damage he took <laughs> in one attack. Did did he? So, is that massive damage? Payback. Uh, no. I mean, it was a lot of damage, Damn. but it's uh, not. What is it? Half his health or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Down. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay, so. Next. Uh, he's heavily damaged. Yeah, that was a big chunk. Echo's turn. Okie dokie. Um, is he still, like, standing or is he down? No, he's standing, but uh, you can't see past. If you try to attack him right now without moving in, you'll roll it. You'll attack at disadvantage because Rokax is in the way. So you're gonna have to like move in and shimmy around a corner or something to get a successful attack okay, on him. Right. I'm gonna shimmy around Rokax. Um, and I'm gonna try the poison spray on. Poison spray is a range. You'll hit all your friends. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, no, first, I don't uh... want to do that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'll just go with the Eldritch Blast again. All right, hang on. Good old trusty. And there's a crit. Oh. Go ahead, roll damage. <laughs> I think that's the second crit you rolled in a row, but the first time it was an accidental roll. Oh my oh, god, he max damage! Oh my, oh my god, are you kidding me? Hacks. Tell me guys hacks. not dead. Tell me guys isn't dead. Hacks. hacks. Straight hacks. Yay. Oh my god, straight hacks. Go um, yeah, he... Go. He, he, he kind of goes... My god. You critted, oh and then you did max damage with your crit. That's insane. Um, yeah, he, he drops down. His eyes are still wild and flicking back and forth, and he kind of, he drops his axe, and he falls face first into the ground. Awesome. Uh, don't, don't touch him. Don't, don't hurt him anymore. Let's tie him up and see what's going on. 100%. Holy shit. shit. I think we should deliver him back to town. Um. Okay. Yes. So tie him up and take him into town. Hold on. We, we still have a. Uh, uh, 
I, I guess I need to jump down from the roof so I can talk there. But... You have a what? Uh, sorry, because I, I was going to attack him. <laughs> I think we should question him first. He's knocked out. Well, he's out cold right now. Yeah, he's gone, yeah. Yeah, he's not dead. He's so, knocked out. Well, we got to do. We gotta tie him up, and we gotta stabilize him so that he doesn't die. Oh, okay. Uh, with, with a medicine check. I can do that. Uh, I've got a protection from evil and good spell, which could help. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, Pancob, you shot. You shot him right in the kidney. Oh my Ooh. God! Another twenty. <laughs> You rolled three twenty. Oh, that's Corin. Okay, I thought Echo just rolled three twenties in a row. You guys are hacking the game. Something's broken. I gotta take a, I gotta take a call. All right. Um. So. Leave it to Corin. <laughs> so uh, you try to bandage him. Is that what you're doing, Corin? Yeah. No, I'm. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and as she's doing that, I feel like I should assist since I probably did a good bunch of damage with uh, the fact so that I shot him. You're gonna stabilize him? Yeah. We don't wanna, like, <laughs> heal. Can you cast yeah. cure wounds on him? I don't just... <laughs> I huh? did. That was Pankog. Oh, okay. that was it. Well, you also that wasn't me. <laughs> you stabilize him and you bring him up to. Uh, stabilized so he wakes up um, and immediately upon his waking up starts attacking is he tied up yeah, yeah but we... he breaks free of yeah. his chains and immediately attacks of again of course <laughs> god damn it so uh <sighs> <laughs> he's gonna fucking attack you now um who I get. Oh yeah, how is this uh, guy? Anyone nearby? I guess he's gonna. All right, I'll just roll to see who he attacks. There, how many party members? One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna roll a d10. I'm ten feet away from you, ready? Because I need to disengage. Okay. Um. Okay, he attacks Corin. Ing. And oh, you're. you're... <laughs> Your armor. Let's see if he hits you. Um, where's his attacks? There it is. He's going to blap. He misses, and then he's going to try to bite you. Sure. And he hits you for nine damage. Right. Ooh. For nine damage. Boom. Okay. Um. Hey guys. Yo. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I gotta. I gotta run real quick. Um. That's fine. So you guys probably finish out without me, right? Yeah. I. I, I can take control of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Uh, it was fun, guys. See ya. See ya. Cool. See ya. We're going okay, to. Uh... Crap. How do I clear the initiatives? Oh, here. We just re-rolled initiative. <laughs> you guys are you guys are in combat again, Lushu. It's your turn. Okay, uh, so I'll make my way forward, back um, behind him. Okay. And so, back up. No, that's got a hit. Easy. Um, uh, yeah, you hit him. Got my damage. Eight. And, and you bad. knock him out again. Okay then. Um, now, considering <laughs> I've still action. Um, can I tie him up again? <laughs> well, yeah, well, every I mean, time you, if, if there's no combat going on, you don't need to do action stuff. So, yes, you can tie him up again. Four ropes this time. And he literally broke out of the ropes the first time. Yeah, but I use a lot more. You lose I use the entire, I, I use the entire 50 feet of rope that I've got to tie this dude up. Okay. So, I decide to take it upon myself, and I draw my short sword. And I just go up and I stab him until he's dead. Okay, so you're gonna kill him. Okay, so, or are you gonna stab him? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So he's at negative ten life, so that is considered dead in the land of D and D. I need to take no chances. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, I was I was already planning to. to I'm kill the him, basically. I was thinking he got out once. He's gonna get out again, so I might as well kill him. For heaven's sake, he bit Corin, a dragonborn who had really tough skin. Yeah, and you shot him. Yeah. You guys did the same damage. <laughs> Okay. You usually um, bleed out, sir. So what do you... you he's dead. Uh, what do you guys do? I propose we go investigate the house. So I want to see what's in trap door. I want to see what's in probably, We should probably bring his body yeah. back to the fucking town. Be like, hey, here's your yeah. werewolf. Have you got any proof that he's the werewolf yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should go to the cabin. In the cabin with an axe and some blood on him. That's it. But the um, other guy had a knife, so... I want to see what's down below. Maybe it might be his son. It might be his brother. It might be someone who he keeps underground out of everyone's way um, so that they don't discover that he lives there or something. I don't know. But I want to see what's down underneath the... That so you, trap door... You go downstairs? It wouldn't have been mentioned. You go downstairs? Uh, oh, there's an upstairs as well, so... Oh, I'm going downstairs. I'm more interested in what's downstairs. Okay. So, oh, did you still, uh, go down. I have okay. my, uh, let's see. Close quarters, probably best if I just put away my longbow and draw my, and keep it out. I'd keep your bow out because you don't get disadvantage on, oh no, you don't get disadvantage on long shots. That's right. So that's up to you. But yeah, if you, if you shoot within melee range, you get disadvantage. Yeah. Um, yeah, attacking at a long range doesn't impose disadvantage. Yep. Uh, but you go it, upstairs. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a single uh, bedroom upstairs, and it's very plain. It is a, a simple like. There's no bed frame, but there's a simple kind of a cot of a bed, and that's about it. There's nothing in the bedroom. <laughs> So I can see underneath the cot. Uh, well, it's there's like nothing under it because it's just like stack of something to sleep on just directly on the floor. <clears throat> Very Is there plain any bedroom. Blood yeah. Outside or inside? Not in the bedroom, no. Okay. Uh, I I decide to yell out, uh, "Clear up here!" Okay. Uh, Lucia, you said you're going downstairs. Okay, um, as you may, may, or as you may, as you make your way, uh, downstairs, uh, and you, you light a torch nearby, the basement is a gruesome sight. Uh, there's chains and hooks hanging from the cross beams, uh, and a large room is just drenched in blood. In the corner, there's... A large mound of stack of uh, clean picked bones are stacked in the corner. Okay. So I, I kind of just, just, just kind of slowly do the comedy turn around, just <laughs> and call up to everyone. Guys, I think you want to come down and see this. <laughs> I just kind of like. Uh, I proceed to wake my way downstairs after hearing his very pitiful voice about, Hey, you might want to see We all go downstairs to... Yes. Okay. And I just kind of, uh, just point <laughs> in the corner, in the murder corner, in the sore corner. In the murder oh, corner. Right. What was going on? The, I think that might pretty much covers it, but the thing is, we were attacked by the guy with an axe, but earlier on there was a guy with a knife. Does that mean there's more than one? Could be. Could be. Okay, is there anything else that's standing out to us in the murder basement? Uh, uh, not. The only thing is just various, like, instruments, you know, to carve up things and cause pain. Um, do any of the murder, uh, 
objects? Do they appear to still be somewhat humanoid? Any of them still have clothes on them that might give identifying factors? The murder objects? <laughs> what the, the human pieces around? Oh, the blood everything everything has been picked clean. But yes, there are like skulls and bones of human. Okay, I've got one. Um. You said there was like chains and stuff, like you know, basically like a, a prison cell sort of thing without the bars, like you know, chains and that sort of stuff. Um, I have a crowbar and uh, a hammer on me. Is there any way I'd be able to remove the chains from the wall um, and keep them in my inventory so that in future, if we do come across something like this, we're not using rope, which is easily breakable. Yeah, exactly. We're using the chains that are on the wall. Is there any way I could remove them using my crowbar and my hammer? And if so, can I roll to see how many feet of chain I can get? I'm pushing the boat out, dude. I yeah, want it. Yeah. Let me see. I don't know if your crowbar and I don't know if crowbar and your little your little earlier. hammer would be enough to break the chains. No, 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 like remove it from the wall, not breaking it. Like the, at the point where it's in, that's pretty yeah, much that, the weakest that, so point. That, if you with the pivot, you can break it off the wall. Even if I take a little bit of rock with me, I don't. You know, I don't know. Is there a way I could do it? Uh, because the cell is definitely it, it's built as in things are not supposed to be easily removed. Uh, I will let you take a. Uh... Oh, I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm gonna push the boat out so far here. Okay. Can I take out my vial of Medusa blood that I got and see if it will cause the chain at the wall to melt? Sure. Can I roll for that? That would be amazing. All right. So what I mean, should I roll? You don't need to roll for it. Okay, can I can I see if it works then? Can I yeah, you can take out my it. vial of Medusa blood and um, I put it on the chain at the bit where it connects to the wall to try and get as much of it as possible? You... I'd, I'd like to uh, ask Lucio, Lucio, um, what are you doing? Surely it would turn to stone. Exactly, if it ages and turns to stone, it'd be easier to break with my hammer. It could do something. So we might you're, as well you're dumping all your Medusa blood on it? I, oh, you said it was pretty much worthless before. It was more of a memento to me. So I might as well see if it works. Okay. You know, use what I've got. I might as well. You, um, know, you, know, you never know. It could work. Uh, the, uh, the, the anchor to the wall. As soon as the, Medusa, the blood of the Medusa hits it, it gets covered in blood. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> okay. It is now well, at a least we anchor know. covered in blood. <laughs> at least now we know. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Um, oh, is there any tools? Like, you said there were like murder tools and stuff. Is there anything heavy duty enough to break the chain or cut the chain? Anything whatsoever? No. They're all like stabby tools and slashing because tools. Because if there are more than one werewolf, if one can already break out of rope, that's why I wanted the chain. I wanted the chain to be able to tie up the other werewolf if there is one. Because we had one guy with a knife. I never said there was a werewolf. Knife. You never said werewolf, but there, are, there is a guy with a knife. There is a guy with a knife, and the guy without the knife, like who we don't even know if was a werewolf, managed to break out of the rope. So if it is a beast, if this isn't the guy, then they're clearly going to be stronger than this dude and break out of the rope even easier. Um, so the chains, I just thought, would be a good aid for us. But we can move on now if you want. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, moving so. on. Uh, okay. Is there any knife that's suitable for use in the future? Is there what? Is oh, it, is there any nothing that's better than what you guys have, no. Huh? Okay, well, if there's what nothing about the clothing? There, is there anything we can look at to identify um, anyone that the uh, town is I don't. Uh, you wouldn't be able to identify anyone because you didn't know anyone from the town. I mean, anything we could take back, like. Uh, uh, is there no, anything? Is there anything there that looks like it would have come from Gregory's room? Like anything, like you know, if we saw like a teddy bear covered in blood there, was there another teddy bear that kind of looked like it would match the other one? Is there anything that we see that would match what we saw, me and Echo saw, in Gregory's room? No, the uh, the only thing that is in this room, it, besides, you know, just covered in blood, is the bones from the victims. Okay, well, I think we're spending too much time on this now. Like, <laughs> we, we've determined nothing's here. Well, um, I mean, else, the, we can direct the villagers and they can come and make their own assumptions. 
Yeah, they'll probably have more of an idea than we would. We can just tell them where it is. Uh, but for now, should we take that body back with us? Yes. Or do we leave yeah. the body here? Okay, then. Um, you can use the rope to drag it. Yeah, okay. So I guess we'll get the body and we'll start making our way back towards... Um, was it Wickwick, did you say? Wickwick, yeah. Wickwick, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as traveling, uh, do I still have awareness in my favorite territory? Yes. So no more burning to bear traps. Um, okay, so uh, you guys are heading back to Witwick. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. you, you carrying him, what are you doing? You just, you're, you're dragging him with rope? Yeah, we're just, we're just dragging him along. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have to you have to undo kind of the ropes a little bit so you can get some length to drag him with. Um, but you start dragging him, uh, you have a couple hours, a uh, few hours trip to get back to town. Um, you guys uh, have a couple hurted party members. Um, Pancock, have you kept track of your uh, the spell slots you've used? Yes. Okay. I've only used two. Okay. Corin, you've done the same? Any spell slots? Yeah, because you, you used uh, Cure Wounds, right? Um, I did. Oh, that was you? No, she did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I don't think Corrin has Cure Wounds. Mm-mm. Okay. I have, like, Healing Word. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, Corin, are you still in your wolf form? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to close that then. Okay, so um, I'm assuming you guys just kind of head back to town? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so mm-hmm. you got you guys observed the uh, the tent or the house for about 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, you got, you're on your way headed back to town and uh, hold on. Suddenly, um, Pancog, your senses spike and you're immediately filled with danger. You look back behind you and you notice that the figure is no longer there. They've escaped your bounds. Wait, so they weren't dead. Dead. I I kind of look over to Pancog and I said, well, I thought you killed him. I did. He was stone cold dead. Well, you didn't kill him dead enough. (laughs) No. (laughs) What more did you want from me? All right. uh... (laughs) He got shot in the kidney. He got critted by an Eldritch Blast. Pancog, roll a dexterity save. I should have done one more bite attack just to be sure. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay. Um... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I think... Give me just a second, because if this is true, then it might actually save me. Uh... Do do okay. So, Derry, never mind. Never mind. I don't get saved. Okay. Um, you hear from right behind your head. You hear a sudden voice from behind you, and uh, you hear shadow surprise, and he takes a bite at you, and he completely misses. Thanks, God. Can I turn around and stab him? He tries chomp chomp. Oh, the second time he does hit you, though. And you take six damage. Uh, where... Oh, wrong thing. Uh, where are you... Oh, I put the wrong damage on. (laughs) Sorry. I I damaged Pancog earlier when it should have been Echo. Or not Echo. God damn it! Corin. There we go. Fixed. Okay. Um. Whoop. God damn it. I always push that button. Everyone roll for initiative again. Blam. Okay. I just had it roll. Echo, it's your turn. <laughs> you guys are all very close. Obviously. 
Oh, you're all not within ra melee range, but, uh... Alright, okay, um... Let's see... Um, first of all, I want to put uh, on I already my... Rolled I already rolled initiative for everyone. Yeah, we did have to roll in this. Oh. Can I put on, uh, oh, my mage up. armor? Uh... That is a cast you have to do, right? Uh... Yeah. It's an action. You get... 13 plus your dex modifier. What is... 13 plus... So your AC is 15 right now. Yeah. Yeah. That you do... Okay, can you not hold down the button? Just hit I'm Carnegie. wondering if that's <laughs> what my cat is gonna sound like in a few years. It's so Hopefully annoying. that worked. Yeah. Okay. Mine just wants to play so, all day. So that's your uh your action echo. Yes. All right. Oh, everyone messed up the uh, the thing. Okay. Uh, the figure is going to attack. Um, Brokax. Uh, he doesn't have any of his weapons anymore because obviously he was unconscious. Um, he's going to bite at him and misses and he's gonna bite at him again fucking misses again 18 ac is nothing to scoff at holy crap <laughs> all right corn's turn i am going to <clears throat> i'm gonna try to use moonbeam mominin okay Oh, he has to see if he uh he, he saves with a constitution save. That's what it is. All right. Uh save. Boom. Uh he fails the constitution and I think it's 1d10, is that what it was? Do 2d10. You... All right, so roll 2d10 you... for your damage. Okay. Do you press the um 2d10? So, uh, you click the magnifying glass, and then you can just drag the damage. Oh, that's what I was trying to do, yeah. I was trying to get it to come up, but it wouldn't... Oh. Okay. Nice. That's some good damage, yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, 18 damage, and there's a moonbeam in place now. Right, Pancog's turn. Pancog, you okay. are like 10 feet away, so you're not going to get disadvantage. Then I whip out my longbow. Uh, and I'm going to take aim. Okay. Uh, you hit. And you mm. do 16 damage. I'm pulling out a calculator for this. Nine, it bit me. I right, calculator. You open, and then it is uh, Lucius' turn. Okay, uh, whereabouts am I from it? Oh, you're right next to him. Er, right next. Actually, no. You <clears throat> should have been at disadvantage because he was. Pointing the, or he he bit you right, Pancog. Yes. Okay, so roll the your sharpshooter again, your attack to see if you actually hit, because uh, you're at disadvantage because he was right behind you. Forgot about that. And okay, so you you missed. Um. So Lucio, you're like ten feet away. You can get to him. Okay. Um. Sorry, I kept thinking that it was, he was behind the Echo. Case, what I'll do is I'll just approach behind him and first dagger. Eh? Uh, is that a hit? He parries your attack. Um, he he dodges and dodges and weaves. Um, oh wait, 
No, he can't do that anymore. Because he doesn't have a melee weapon. He hasn't got a weapon, yep, so he, he can't so, parry. Yep, so, uh, yeah, that hits. Uh, that hit? Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, and there's a d4. 5f. Also, okay, uh, and... remember you get uh, sneak attack. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, let me roll that. There we are. 1 d6 roll. I didn't roll, so I'll just roll a d6. There we go. Oh, nice. Uh, five. Got it. Nice. Um, and second dagger. That definitely hits. And yep. I'll just roll a d4. Uh, one. Uh, so, uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it adds up in the end. That's right. 11 damage altogether. Rokax is going <clears> to <throat> run up. Uh, I got to open his character sheet. Uh, he's going to take a swing at him with his hammer. And he hits. And he does seven damage. Now it's the figure's turn. There we go. Um, he's going to take a bite at um, Lushu, but he's going to roll at disadvantage because he's not attacking Rokax. Bop. And he de definitely misses. He's going to do it again. And uh, I don't think I need to re-roll that. Uh, I do, because it, it could be a, a crit miss. Let's see. And he just misses you. Awesome. Holy crap. Rokax can just control the bad guys. Like, no, no, they're Cora's yeah. turn. <laughs> Um, I think, um, I am just going to, where did my turn go? Um, you went earlier, and, uh, because you re-rolled your initiative, you actually went first, and then it put oh, you at yeah. the bottom of the queue, so I had to put you back. I remember. So now it's fixed. I'm probably gonna gotcha. use Produce Flame, like, just to, like, throw a fireball. Okay. <coughs> oh. That's four damage. Uh, you have to see if you hit him first. I, uh, that's what I thought, too, but I wasn't sure. Is... Yeah. Uh, you do no. not. <coughs> Alright, Pancock's turn. <sighs> okay, so, am I still at disadvantage? Uh, yeah, because he's right next to you, so you'd have to back up. A square. Uh, okay, he gets an attack of opportunity on you, but it's at disadvantage. Uh, does he actually hit you, uh, Pangog? How much AC do you have? He hit you. Uh, so you take. Uh, what'd you say? Said armor class is thirteen. Yeah, he hit you. Um, all right. There, okay, so he did damage. Yeah, you are successfully far enough away that uh, you can shoot him without disadvantage. Or wait, no, no, no. Oh, you, you, yeah, you, you used your move action to get away. That's right. Um, yeah. you miss. Lucio, your turn. Okay. All right then. Um, okay then. So once again, the dagger comes out, my dudes. Oh, easy. You hit him. Uh, so five. So you don't get sneak attack because okay. there's no one within melee. Oh no, that's a yeah, lie. No. Rokax is next to him. So yes, you do. Oh, I do get sneak attack. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Then I'll just roll a d6 and three. So that's. Eight damage, okay. and then the second dagger. That and probably misses. Miss. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right, and my turn. Brokax is gonna... I closed his character sheet again. 
He's gonna take a swing at him. Oops. This one. Ooh, nice hit. Yeah, he definitely hits him. And then he blap. He does 12 damage. Which is... He is barely left standing. Echo's turn. How close am I? Uh, you're within 20 feet. I'm going to use my crossbow. So... Uh, you hit him. Three damage. All right, you knock him unconscious. Whew. Okay, we got him unconscious. <sighs> okay, this time I suggest I stab him in the heart and cut off his head. Yeah, remove uh, the head. Yeah, I was gonna say remove head. I was about to say remove the head. Yeah, take his head off. All right. Decap it's a, it's a decapitation. You're gonna cut off his head. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Uh, finally. You manage to catch him in the neck, uh, chopping off his head. Uh, his head topples to the gr ground, expressionless. Uh, you fall to your knees, and you, you catch your breath, and uh, you're finally safe from uh, Shiloh the Buff. <laughs> just, just for good measure, can I go up with my short sword and continually stab him in the you're chest? You're just going to mutilate just... him? Just stab, 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 stab? I mean, hey, he came back to life. <laughs> yes! Yeah, but he hasn't got a head. <laughs> yeah, it's not a chicken. She's just being <laughs> extra precaution. <laughs> extra precautionary. He do it, Jada. I just want to be sure. I would rather mutilate a person to make sure they're not coming back. <laughs> So, okay, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, okay, so he's headless now. Uh, you have seemed to have killed him. Now what do you guys do? We grab the head. I, I think we continue we... making our way back to the town. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, Lucy. With the head? With the head. Yeah, oh, we'll happily carry the head. I'll be kicking it along the floor. I'll kick it along the floor like a football all the way back to the town. No, don't worry about it. I'm happy. Okay. So your adventure here was... Uh, a couple hours, and it's a couple hours back. It's going to be about two in the morning uh, when you walk back into town. Okay, so... uh, that might be a little bit disrespectful because it might be a beloved member of someone's well, family. No one's around yet. I'll pick, it up. I'll pick it up by the time we get to town. Don't worry. I won't be kicking it all into town. <laughs> not cursed by accident. Let's curse. go, go have some fun. Just playing though. soccer all the <laughs> Yeah, just, all right. just you know, we've got a bit of a while to go. I might as well have some fun on the way. Okay. Pass it over to Echo. Header! <laughs> there you go. Kind of stares at it. Like, what are you doing? Okay, so you guys are backing down? Yes. Yes. Is the inn still open? Um, it is 2 a.m. Right. It's, it's boarded up. Uh, so, no, it's not open. You probably guys would probably have to camp outside or something. Yeah, we're going to need to take rest after that. Uh, uh, no, I'll tell you what we'll do instead. Best advice? I bought those kids a room, remember? They're staying at the inn. There is now a house, which is empty, which we can um, have shelter in for the evening. So you want to break into a kid's house? No, it was not broken. It, it was open, remember? They left it open. They never locked anything up. Like, they were sent to the, the inn for the night, which I paid for. So I believe it's perfectly acceptable for us to camp in. That they're there for two days. We can camp here for one night. Sure. Can I go ahead? I and think go? that makes the most sense. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll say that they left it open. Well, they were kids, didn't they? They were more yeah. excited about food and a place yeah, to stay they, and they the being protected they from the it. adults than they were about their house. So, you know, <laughs> I think it's fine. 
And we'll just we'll brick up the door with whatever, like some furniture or whatever, to make sure that yeah, no we can, can make sure that it's yeah. safe for them when they come. Because it is already boarded up. It's as safe as safe can be. It's safer to be inside there than it would be out camping, especially if there is yeah. another guy with a, you know, the knife guy running around. So yeah, I think it would be in our best interest to squat, shall we say? Okay. Yeah, there are only children. There's so much they can do to keep their house safe. So maybe we could do something to help them to make it safer at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll say you guys go camp out in uh, their their little village house thing, and uh, you sleep throughout the night with uh, nary a problem. No one tries to break down the door or coming after you. Uh, the head doesn't seem to be reacting to anything anymore so uh, <laughs> it seems that you guys are safe and uh i think that's where we have to call it for tonight because it's getting mm. late for you guys um yeah. but I, think that's I did post something in the, the discord under live stream gameplay i recommend you guys go check it out after stream um in regards to what you guys just played uh for doofinesses but uh next week we're going to be getting into this was just kind of a fun thing because it was a it's supposed to be a shorter stream, uh, but next week hopefully we're gonna get into sure. some meat of the story and stuff. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, but did you guys have fun? Was it goofy? That yeah. was that was good. That was awesome. Yes. <laughs> really, really, really enjoyed that one. Yeah. yeah he <laughs> bit me. He bit Corey. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll say uh, you you guys definitely will get a long rest because you are sleeping. In the town, so not an issue. Rest, long rest, boom. But yeah, whatever, so, uh, whatever happened to the it. guy with the knife? We'll find out next time. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tune in next week to find out what happens to the quarantine. As they continue <laughs> town and forest. Right? Um. Okay then. Uh, is it a, I guess. Uh, is it the Medusa from Back to Life? Nope. Thing went. Oh. Did you guys uh, have anything to say to bring up? Questions, comments, well, concerns. That, 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 that was. I gotta say that was probably my, my favorite session so far. That was <laughs> Me awesome. too. That I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. That was, fun. <laughs> that was great fun. <laughs> And the whole time I had that Shia LaBeouf song in my head. <laughs> yeah, Corin kind of figured it out right away, and I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, and I was really worried because I, I thought everyone knew of that music video, and like half of you didn't. I was like, oh shit! Oh, I'm glad I posted yeah, that I'll a few weeks ago. <laughs> Friends that don't, I'm sure. But cool. I don't know. Uh, did Trindum know about it? No, I had to send it to him. Uh, over messenger and he's like, what the fuck? So. Well, I feel like that's on you. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to ping him after this and be like, yo, you remember that stupid video I sent you a couple weeks ago? That's what you just fought. <laughs> and see if, nice. you, if you put it together. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm glad you guys had fun. Um, you guys wanna good say fun. goodbye to chat and all that good stuff? Hey, uh, thank, thank you for being here, guys. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Is, yeah, I'm gonna go make food because it's 1 a.m. and I'm hungry. Yeah, my stomach's yeah, growling. I, I, I keep eating on stream every time. It's just because I'm so hungry. Yeah, it's mid afternoon, man. People oh, get yeah, hungry. It's five to one. So I'm it's gonna fun. go put my cat to sleep because she is asleep in my lap. <laughs> okay, all right, guys, you have a good rest of your afternoon, and me and Echo are probably gonna go to sleep now because it's late. Right. Yeah. Night, kids. Hopefully, you get some real. Right. See you guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye. All right, my friend Arenos. After the dragon passes. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun with that. Uh, that was that was a little goofy fun there. Uh, next week, uh, I do plan on. Uh, hopefully, we'll get into some meat of the story as they uh, come. Uh, what do we call it? Raska, as the the team comes across uh, Raska, and hopefully uh, they will come across some uh, significant story stuff that they can pursue the story instead of uh, you know kind of just leveling up and becoming stronger in preparation for whatever happens. Anyways, my friends, uh, I'm gonna end it off here because I'm getting tired. I have plans in about an hour, and I need a heck and sleep or sleep eat. Um, I'm glad you guys all had fun. Um, there's a goofy ass session, but I had fun.
I'm glad you guys did too. I uh, did not expect the uh, tie him up and drag him out thing, which was probably smart because you guys would have had to deal with the actual freaking his axes and crap again. But you pulled him out and he had no more weapons, so that was smart. Um, I do think I misplayed it the first time you guys stabilized him. He should have went to full life instead of immediately getting knocked out again. But whatever. It was fun. It was goofy. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but uh, we are going to end here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. I uh, hope you guys had fun. If you did, remember to like, subscribe, comment. It helps me help us out a lot. Let's me know what you're liking, what you're not liking. But more importantly, remember to spay new to your pets, adopt them shop, donate to a rescue if you can afford it, or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. That is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and rescues out that are very much in need. I will post that video for you guys to see as well. Um, that is the video that is uh, referencing uh, the game that we just kind of played. Uh, go watch it. It's goofy. It's hilarious. It's about Shia LaBeouf. And uh, it, it's just stupid, but it's it's great. And that's what it was based off of. Anyways, my friends, thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Oh, no, wrong button. No, all the problems. Oh, okay. Well, things are going to be weird. <laughs>